Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Pittsburgh, Kansas. We're at the Plaster Center for the Division II National Championship Indoor Track and Field Meet. Live on NCAA.com with a rocking crowd on hand. Frankly, it's a gorgeous day here in uh, the heartland of America. We've got one of the classiest facilities in the country for the fifth time ever hosting our national championship meet. And uh, frankly, we've had that level of competition. We've seen some incredible performances individually so far and cannot wait for what will be the final day of competition. We'll start on the men's side. Here are your team standings through the first six events. We had obviously a couple events that wrapped up yesterday, two on the track, two in the field, with a couple more today. The heptathlon is already complete, as is the men's shot put, and Missouri Southern had two national championships in field events yesterday, so they've got a nice uh, nice lead, 10 points over Grand Valley State. We've got a national championship here this afternoon. Let's catch you up on the action so far. We'll go to the heptathlon, where we saw not just a, a good performance, we saw a legendary performance. The top two individual scores in the history of Division II, men's heptathlon were recorded today by Hunter Jones of Pittsburgh State here in his home facility. He is the national runner-up to Kale Kassin of Lee University, a sophomore who was terrific and established the new all-time record, 5,801 points. Kale Kassin, a national championship you just saw some highlights there from the 1,000-meter run where he won that race and scored, uh, or I should say he came in third in that race, but was able to, to do it in sub-250 time uh, at 248.25. That was fantastic. Hunter Jones also was uh, really special throughout the day, and those two guys, very proud to be atop the podium. Kale Kassin from Lee University in Tennessee, your national champion in the heptathlon. And then how about in the shot put? A, uh, a Grand Valley State victory for Miles Kerner for the second consecutive day as we show you some of the guys getting ready on the blocks. This is uh, the highlights, or at least a couple of them, from the men's shot put. Noah Evers from Davenport, the senior, finished in third, 1857. Justin Jenks from Colorado State Pueblo, 1876. His season best, good enough for second, but for the second season in a row, Grand Valley State's Miles Kerner is the best shot putter in the country in Division II. Today, his second throw, 19.31 meters. Not quite as far as he threw a year ago, but still good enough to win the national championship. Congratulations, Miles Kerner. Hold that trophy high. What an incredible performance. Kerner was fifth as a freshman, and now he's won back-to-back -back years for the Lakers. So Grand Valley State is in good shape at the moment. Adams State, West Texas A&M, Pittsburgh State, all of them certainly performing well, but behind Missouri Southern. Let's take a look at the men's 60-meter hurdles national finals. This should be a ton of fun. T.J. Skinner from Ashland in lane one. Joel Nayutasa in lane two. Ran a PR yesterday to get into this final. He is one of two Pittsburgh State runners. Daylon Williams, the favorite, in lane four. Williams was runner-up a year ago to his teammate Cordell Tinch, who is one of the two fastest 60-meter hurdles runners ever in Division II. He and Minnesota State's Miles Hunter have all of the records. Of course, Ashland won the national title in this event a couple years ago, so Skinner hoping to bring it back to uh, North Central Ohio. Keep your eye, too, on Cole Cass, or I should say Kale Casson, who obviously is coming off that big championship. He is in lane five, and uh, certainly don't want to miss out on Abel Christensen or Everett DeLate. We had four guys in this heat yesterday run personal record times, all of them by just a couple hundredths. So you're all about trying to shave off just ever so little time along the way if you can. Skinner, the GMAC champ this year, after he finished eighth last year, so great for him in that regard. Kasson, two straight years, he's won the Gulf South Conference. Christensen, the uh, third this year in the Northern Sun. DeLate was the uh, Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference champion for each of the last two years. And uh, Troy White, who's in lane six, the Lone Star Conference champion this year. Last year, he was the outdoor national champ in the 400 hurdles when he was competing for the Lincoln Rail Splitters in Missouri. But everybody here is going to try to run down Dalen Williams, whose PR at 766. Only three guys have ever gone faster in Division II. Tinch, Miles Hunter, who I mentioned, and TJ Caldwell from 
Pittsburgh State, who last year finished in seventh. Pittsburgh State Gorillas sure are hopeful. This is going to be a fun, memorable day for them. Everybody into the blocks. Williams in lane four. Kassin in lane five. All-time D2 record unlikely to be broken today. 7.5 seconds. Best we've ever seen from anybody in this field. 766. Let's see if the competition brings out the best. Williams, an excellent start in four. How about Skinner in one? Oh, he's flying. S uh, lane seven running well. Abel Christensen. Christensen trying to make it happen. I think it's Williams, though. Waiting for the final results. It is Williams. 7-77. A national championship on his home track for Dalen Williams of Pittsburgh State. Last year, the Gorillas went 1-2-7 at Nationals. This year, they go 1-4 as Nayutasa finishes in fourth. It's Williams, Parker Warmeck from Central Missouri, and Kale Kassin, the bronze medalist from Lee. The race today, slightly slower than it was yesterday in prelims. Fortunately, Skinner flipped a couple of the hurdles along the way, and it really slowed him up from having the kind of race that he wanted. Dalen Williams, he and Joel Nyatusa put Pittsburgh State up to the, uh, up to the minute now in first place after men's high jump has also gone final. All right, as we get ready for the women's 60-meter hurdles to catch you up on the women's events of the day, let's take a look at the standings coming in. Pittsburgh State, 45 and a half points. Excellent work from them. They lead Adams State, who is trying to go back-to-back -back for the first time ever as a team, despite the fact that they've won five national championships in all and certainly been among the most consistent and dominant programs in the country. Grand Valley State right in the thick of things. Azusa Pacific got one national title yesterday, and Nicole Warwick is going to be running here in just a, a couple of minutes in the 60-meter hurdles. See if she could maybe double it up, but she'll have to beat reigning champion Denisha Cartwright. How about a quick look at the women's pentathlon, which also has wrapped up this afternoon with a Pittsburgh State victory for Blakely Wynn, who breaks the 4,000-point mark for a personal best, 4,009. She beats out Kayla Goodwin by just 59 points. And Nari Crean from Washburn finishes in third with a great performance of her own. Maddie Flanagan from Pittsburgh State was in uh, fifth place. Blakely Wynn was the uh, uh, pentathlon winner in the 60 hurdles and in the shot put. She finished eighth in the high jump, third in long jump, and 10th in the 800, but she literally led this competition wire to wire. Once she took the lead in the 60 hurdles, nobody caught her. Fantastic job uh, in that regard. Okay, we also saw the women's triple jump wrap up, and uh, Pittsburgh State performed well in that discipline with second and third place finishes from Una Childress and Taylor Nellums, but nobody could get past the freshman, this young lady here from Cal State LA, the Golden Eagles have a national champion, Jonan Young, her fifth and final jump that actually counted after she faulted on her sixth. Young ended up going 13-19. And the first year collegiate student out on the West Coast, Jonan Young is the national champion after PRing 13-19. Not too many young women have gotten into that 13 meter club and triple jump, but Young able to do it beating Childress by seven centimeters as she gets it done here this afternoon. 
All right, you can see the young ladies that are getting ready for the 60 hurdles, just kind of hanging out, relaxing. That event is scheduled to start in about five minutes. So while we have a couple minutes time, let's go check in real quick on the men's pole vault, which is ongoing at the moment. The men's pole vault, national leader this year coming in, is a young man from Harding, Vlad Malikin, who cleared far more than anyone else had. Five meters, 62. And Vlad, along with Thomas Nieto from Texas A&M Kingsville, was the second seed coming in. Each of them have passed all the way up through five meters, 14. So it's gonna be a little bit before we see either of those guys we also have not yet seen Reagan Ulrich, Grayson Smith, and Jacoby Jones, all guys that we certainly expect are gonna be a part of this competition. Thus far, haven't had too many misses, as you watch Charlie Garino from Central Missouri, who did need three passes at 489, but eventually was able to clear. Garino, a freshman for Central Missouri. His personal best is at five meters 20. That's 5.04, and unfortunately, he misses on his first at that height. Okay, we'll step away here just for a brief second to go down to the award presentation for the uh, men's high jump, which we just wrapped up, where Javon Harrison and Jonathan Rankins James of Grand Valley State are your top two finishers nationally. Harrison in first, Rankins James in second, both of them clearing Two meters 19, but Harrison did it on the first try. And congratulations to the Lakers. They go first, second, and sixth in that event. Big finish for Grand Valley State. All right, getting ready now for the women's 60 meter hurdles as the ladies are in their blocks and warming up. And this should be fun because the next two women's races on the track feature probably the best sprinter in the country. She's got to back it up, but when Denisha Cartwright is on the track, everybody else is paying attention. The senior from Minnesota State is the two-time defending champion. By the way, she was the runner-up in 2021. All she does is win, it's ridiculous. You look at basically every single one of the races that she's been in throughout her career, and she is almost exclusively the winner. Just, uh, it's part of her DNA. It's absolutely terrific. Denisha Cartwright, she's dominated conference competition at Minnesota State and is trying to bring another national championship back home. We'll see her shortly in the 60 meter dash as well as the 60 hurdles. You can see her there, the young lady in purple in lane four. She'll be running next to her teammate, Adia Brewster in lane five. And there's also a Maverick in lane eight. So this is a huge event for Minnesota State, Roxanne Foster, who previously competed at American International, was an All-American in this event two years ago. She's trending really nicely right now in lane eight. The young lady there in lane four is the one everybody's trying to run down. This is the first ever meet, by the way, at the NCAAs for Brewster, who just transferred to Minnesota State, and her PR came to the conference championships two weeks ago, 8.28. Cartwright yesterday ran eight seconds flat. Denisha Cartwright is the Division II all-time record holder, 7.93. She ran that at the conference championships, and it is the only sub-eight-second time ever run in Division II women's track history in the 60-meter hurdles. Missy Moreni, Patrice Clark, Blakely Wynn, Nicole Warwick, and Leighton Greeson also all in the field here. Clark, the Rocky Mountain champion. Moreni was the runner-up. Warwick, of course, won the long jump yesterday with a D2 all-time record, 6 meters 55. She won the pentathlon last year, but has never qualified for this event individually. So it'll be fun for Warwick in lane 6. And Greeson is the Lone Star Conference runner-up this year. Three Mavericks in the field, though, is what a lot of people have their eyes on. Lanes 4, 5, and 8. And believe me when I tell you, the heavy favorite is in lane four. Four of the six fastest times and eight of the 14 fastest times ever in this division belong to Denisha Cartwright. Cartwright 
it is off. She looks great so far. Brewster trying to keep up. Cartwright already separating. Oh my goodness, this isn't even close. Denisha Cartwright, get off my back. What another national championship. 8-0-4. The Mavericks go one, two, three. It's a podium sweep. Warwick, 8.48. It's a great run for her. Not quite her PR, but a good performance. Blakely win after last year not getting out of prelims. Terrific. She finishes in fifth. But the story here, three straight at the top for the Mavericks. Denisha Cartwright, the three-time defending champion in the 60-meter hurdles. Brewster in second, and Roxanne Foster finishes with a bronze. By the way, the 842 for Foster is a PR. <laughs> oh, I love the sportsmanship there from Patrice Clark, who was an All-American last year and just goes over to Denisha Carwright and says, man, that was sweet. 8.04, officially the winning time for Cartwright. More than three-tenths faster than anyone else. Incredible. All right, we've got the 60-meter dash on the way next. We've got plenty more to come throughout the night right here on NCAA.com. Welcome back to our coverage on NCAA.com. First two track events have been completed today in the 60-meter hurdles. If you just missed it, Daylon Williams from Pittsburgh State on his home track wins a national title 7.77 seconds. And on the ladies' side, the favorite was able to prevail, but it was all about her teammates. Look at this, Minnesota State, they were outstanding in this event and scored 24 points to vault them into second place after Cartwright, Brewster, and Foster went three in a row at the top with gold, silver, and bronze in the 60-meter hurdles. And now Pittsburgh State, who, by the way, did score four points from Blakely win in the 60-meter hurdles. Pittsburgh State's lead has narrowed a little bit. Now, if you're Adams State, you're not panicking by any stretch because your better results you're expecting are going to come in some of the distance events here in just a bit. Let's go over to the award ceremony. This is for the men's 60-meter hurdles. Great moment for Dalen Williams. While we're waiting for our men's 60 meter dash to start here in about four minutes time, we're gonna take you over to the women's shot put where it's a uh, two flight event. Everybody gets three throws based on where you are in the standings. They will basically cut the field essentially in half at that point. At the moment, your leader is a young lady for Ashland, but it's not this young lady, Molly Winner, it's her upperclassman teammate, Kelsey Kinsley. Wait for an official result there for... Oh, you know what? I beg your pardon. They were a little late updating it. That was Kelsey Kinsley, who just faulted on her third throw, but her second round, 14.68. Is good enough for first place as Rhett Thorns from Grand Valley stands in. 
Missouri second place. 1460. All right, let's go back over to the track where they're introducing our lane assignments in the men's 60 meter dash. In lane one, a junior from Minnesota State, Jabez Reeves, who equaled his PR yesterday with a 672. He is the NSIC champion this year. Also, he won the Mountain East a couple years ago when he competed at Wheeling. To Priest Hogan's for Pittsburgh State. He's one of three gorillas running in this race. He's as good as 666, ran 672 yesterday. Big opportunity for Hogan's in this race. Tevin Wright Rose, his teammate running next to him, PR'd yesterday 669. He was the MIAA runner up this year. Malachi Adams, certainly one of the favorites. 664 yesterday, a season best time for him. Fourth last year, runner up a year ago. Adams, the champion for two straight years now in the Great American Conference. He PR'd last year at the GMAC meet 662, so he's certainly capable of a big run. Top qualifier yesterday was Terrell Robinson Jr., a sophomore from St. Augustine's. He last year at this meet finished in eighth place, ran 684. He was two tenths faster yesterday in equaling his PR, so look out for Robinson. Micah Gremling from Walsh is running in lane six. Runner up each of the last two years to Adams in the GMAC. Brian Mosley Jr. from Colorado Springs in lane seven. Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference champion for the second consecutive year. This is his fourth crack at this event at NCAAs, but he's never been better than ninth. He's never actually gotten to the final race before. Dakari Charlton from Pittsburgh State in lane eight. He is running uh, quite well this time of year, and he's one of three gorillas that'll be in this race. And the defending champion, Isaac Bazio, by virtue of an exact tie down to the thousandth of a second yesterday between Reeves and Bazio, the defending champion, we will have nine runners in this championship final. Bazio has the eighth fastest time in D2 history at 661. Yesterday he ran 672. Who is the fastest man in Division II this year? Reeves, Hogan's, Wright Rose, Adams, Robinson, Gremling, Mosley, Charlton, and Bazio. Pittsburgh State on the men's side, two points behind Missouri Southern right now. They've got a huge opportunity to surge their way up the team standings and try to become the team to beat this weekend. On the men's side, Pittsburgh State entered as the number one team in the country. Adams State expected to have a really good meet a little bit later on. Adams State's distance runners again this year are terrific, but this is certainly where Pittsburgh State could put themselves a long way out in front of the competition. It appear there may be a malfunction with some of the equipment, so the guys back off here for a moment. Not often you see a reigning champion in lane nine. That's exactly what the sophomore Isaac Bazio will try to do, running really tight along the railing as they work to modify the equipment behind the starting line. I believe that is just the speaker system. I don't think it's anything with the actual uh, timing equipment itself. Obviously, the finish line is on the opposite end of the track. Looks like maybe a cord, looks like maybe the microphone cord, I think. Just gotten pulled out of that left speaker. All right, so after testing, just about ready to go. go the men's 60 meter dash national championship race top qualifier Terrell Robinson is in lane five reigning champion Bazio in lane nine Bazio and Reeves both ran 6.716 yesterday
All-time D2 record, 6.54. Bazio, great start. Holy cow, lane three. Tevin Wright Rose is flying. Bazio coming on strong and nine. It's close. Robinson and five got to the line too. It is officially Robinson. 661. Terrell Robinson Jr. With the eighth fastest run in the history of Division II track, tying last year's champion Isaac Bazio, who is the runner up in 2024. Third place to Micah Gremling from Walsh, 670. Thousandths faster than Adams in fourth. Right row, 671. Look at these numbers. How crazy close this race was. Robinson just at the end was able to lean forward enough. We're talking about incredible parts of seconds. Bazio, Gremling, Adams, and Wright Rose, two through five, separated by four one hundredths of a second. Important enough for Pittsburgh State, despite the fact there were nine guys on the track, that means ninth place does not score, and that was Jabez Reeves at 680. Pittsburgh State goes 578, which is probably good news for everybody else because it means that they'll score relatively few points, all things considered. All right, let's go to the award presentation now for the women's 60-meter hurdles. Denisha Cartwright is going to stand with a couple of her teammates, Nadia Brewster and Roxanne Foster. What a cool moment for the Minnesota State Mavericks. Funny to watch Denisha Cartwright go from podium to track as fast as she did. Uh, that's uh, that's awesome. Hey, look, she is truly one of the premier sprinters in the country. And Denisha Cartwright, after quickly getting a picture, having some fun up there, winning that national title and having that presentation, it's back to the track as quickly as possible. Real quick look at the men's team standings now through nine events. Where Grand Valley State with 39 and a half points has taken the lead over the Pittsburgh State Gorillas. That's because that now officially reflects the point total from the men's high jump. Where Grand Valley State went one, two, tied for six. Pittsburgh State sitting on 34 points. See that updated here shortly to reflect their finishes in the 60 meter dash. Terrell Robinson Jr., national champion on the men's side. All right, for the ladies now, Denisha Cartwright has the sixth fastest time in Division II history. At 7.23 seconds, she's more dominant in hurdles than she is in the 60 meter, but she last year finished third, and two years ago was an All-American in this race, finishing in eighth place. So certainly someone that you've got to contend with on, uh, on the national stage. Alexis Brown last, uh, last I guess it, we should say last afternoon's top qualifier. Brown was just incredible. She went 7.21 last uh, last evening. 
Brown tied the facility record, fourth fastest time ever at 7.21 by 1 100th, just missed tying the championship meet record, which was set by last year's national champion, Michaela Jackson, who runs for Minnesota State, for her teammate for Denisha Cartwright. Don't sleep on lane six either. Marie Eloise LeClaire, an All American last year, she is really special. Eloise LeClaire is an incredible sprinter. She's got such long strides, runs with great explosiveness and, and great confidence. And how about Alexis Hallis, who last year did not, get, uh, did not get out of prelims? Ninth fastest time all time at 7.29. She was the GNAC champ this year by 1 100th over LeClaire. Carson Newman's Sade D'Souza, South Atlantic Conference runner-up to Alexis Brown this year. Brown, of course, from Lenore Ryan. Kaya Epps from Walsh, GMAC champ. Ashley Barrett, the only freshman in the field from New Mexico Highlands, won the Rocky Mountain title this year. And Deandronique Gaines from Pittsburgh State, MIAA champion in both the 60 and the 200. Susa yesterday PR'd by four one hundredths of a second. At 7.42. So she's running well here this time of year. But I would argue the favorite in this field. Alexis Brown obviously had a huge run yesterday, but Denisha Cartwright, if she didn't have to run the 60 meter hurdles and have the podium, maybe you'd you'd feel even better. But I think she's got a championship on her mind. With such equitable talent all the way across it, it just becomes truly about a race mentality. You just got to try to win. Beat the, beat the woman next to you. Four middle lanes are all lightning quick. Here we go, women's 60 meter dash final. Excellent move in lane four. Look at Alexis Brown. Cartwright trying to catch up. I don't think anybody's gonna get there. Alexis Brown from Lenore Rhine, the national champion, 7.18. That ties the all two, all time division two record. Wow. Candace Thomas from Adams State. Barbara Pierre from St. Augustine's, and now Alexis Brown of Lenore Rhine, the all-time fastest mark in Division II history, 7.18 seconds. It is a facility record, it's a championship meet record, and it's a gold medal for Alexis Brown. Cartwright in second at 7.30. Eloise LeClaire and Hollis we're four one thousandths apart from up in the Pacific Northwest. Kaya Epps PRs at 7.41. D'Souza with her season best time, 7.39. Two great runs for her this weekend as Gaines and Barrett put up nice showings and round out the field. Lenore Ryan in the South Atlantic Conference. Sophomore Alexis Brown, your D2 60 meter national champion. Let's head over to the podium for our men's presentation for the 60 meters. Congratulations to Terrell Robinson, who wins the men's 60 meter final for St. Augustine's. Quick timeout, we'll be right back here with more from Pittsburgh, Kansas on NCAA.com.
shot put. This is going to be a great competition. Your order of scores here in play two will start with a sophomore from CSU Buffalo. The automatic runner up in this event and an indoor All right, back on NCA.com where we are getting ready for the men's one mile race. It should begin in approximately six minutes' time. In the meantime, here are your updated women's team standings where Pittsburgh State has 51 and a half points and a nine and a half point lead over Minnesota State at 42 points total. Pittsburgh State in a good spot for now. Adams State hanging around. Of course, they've got the 29 points thanks to some really good performances yesterday. They won the, the DMR. That was probably their overall best effort. But, uh, can't sleep on Gracie Hyde and company. They are getting ready for a big day for sure. Would theoretically start here when the women's mile begins in just a bit where there are three Grizzlies set to run in the championship final. All right, earlier in the high jump, as we show you some highlights from a bit earlier in the day, the men's high jump, we told you and showed you the uh, podium ceremony. That is Evans Yamoa from Central Missouri who had a season best in clearing 219. In fact, all three of these guys did. Yamoa, Jonathan Rankins-James, and Javon Harrison. That's Harrison who ultimately won the event, and he did it because he cleared 2 meters 19 on his first try. It took Rankins-James two tries, and Yamoa did it on his third attempt. All three of those guys were the only ones to clear that height, and all three missed each time at 2 meters 22. So Javon Harrison, the national champion for Grand Valley State, he went first, second, sixth in that event. All right, folks, we're going to go back to the award. Got the men's mile coming up, where the defending champion is Miguel Coca from Adams State. And Miguel is in the field for the Grizzlies, one of two Grizzlies, in fact. He and James Dunn are both going to be on the track here. And as it turns out, not surprisingly at all, if you're a distance fan, Adam State also has Romain Legendre as a top three miler nationally this year. But Legendre is not in the one mile run. He did not enter this race this week. Instead, yesterday ran the 5K. But Adam State does have what are considered to be two of the top performers in this race coming up. Tetuan Legree from Wingate, South Atlantic champion, will be in this race, as is Dominic Suleiman from Saginaw Valley. Dominic on the season has gone as fast as 4.02.38. Yesterday ran 4.12.44. James Dunn, 4.12.15 in prelims, but he is one of the guys that certainly is capable of a sub four minute mile. If you don't. Uh, don't catch him on uh, an incredible day. Jager Zlotov was an All-American last year from Colorado Springs, finishing sixth. Alberto Campa from Colorado School of Mines. George Kuti, freshman from West Virginia, is in the field. He, in fact, is the only freshman in the field. Mason Strader has a great performance for Pittsburgh State as a junior, or I should say he's a junior now. As a freshman, he finished fourth. He and Coca are both in the top 10 list ever, but it is Dunn, who's 357.26 back on February 10th, four weeks ago today. 357.26 was the third fastest mile time ever run in Division II history. Worry, or I should say, don't don't forget about Caleb Futter. You certainly should worry about him uh, after he finished third in this race for Grand Valley State as a freshman last year. Missed out in prelims, but Futter is in hip nine there. And certainly a young man that has a lot of capability here. Futter's gone as fast as 358.65 this season. In fact, as he gets ready, he ran that at the 2024 Mayo Invitational at Notre Dame. Not assisted by altitude or bank track. Or the other times for some of the guys out in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference might be altitude adjusted times. Futter is the real deal. 
It should be a fun race. All-time Division II record belongs to Christian Noble from Lee University in Tennessee. At 3.56.10. Set that two years ago. Championship meet record, four minutes, .34, back in 2001. Off they go, the men's national championship race in the one mile. Caleb Futter out front early on of Strader and Coca. By the way, Coca yesterday was tapped in on the men's DMR for Adam State. He was not originally on the heat sheet to run the final anchor leg, but he did and ultimately won that race for Adam State. It was a big moment for Coca and the Grizzlies because their women had just won that race basically right beforehand. So it was uh, awfully cool that Adam State had both of those off and rolling. It is Futter at the front of the pack. And he's got Suleiman and Zlotov right behind him at the moment with the Grizzlies hanging there in fourth and fifth. Strader for Pittsburgh State running middle of the pack as well. The facility record here was set just last year in 2023. Ryan Riddle from Missouri Southern ran 359.25. The D2 championship meet record is one of the oldest, if not the oldest, record still standing. It was last set in 2001, 23 years ago. In fact, is today the 10th? No, today's the 9th. 23 years ago tomorrow, Abilene Christian's John Kemboy ran 4 minutes, .34 seconds to win the national title. The last 300. So obviously, this is a 300-meter track. This 300 for Futter was 52.91. As we're coming around the back stretch here, Futter still leads the way, but feeling something there from Suleiman and from Zlotov. Does George Couty want to be? Bib six. Water still leading the way. Last split 55 29. This guy's slowed up a little bit in general over that last 300. 5 29, 55 18 for Jaeger, who is officially in second. Coca, Strader, Dunn, Couty, Campa, Suleiman, and Legree. Now they've adjusted that and said Suleiman is up in third place on the live results. Makes more sense. He's running right on the right hip. Strader has made a good push. He run wide there and lost a little bit of ground. Can feel the pace quickening just a bit. Two laps to go for the guys in the national championship one-mile race. Dominic Suleiman from Saginaw Valley, and Caleb Futter from Grand Valley State, the two guys that don't run at altitude all year long, are the ones that at the moment are leading the pack. Here comes Legree from Wingate trying to make a move on the outside. Coca and Dunn hanging around there at the moment for Adam State. Caleb Futter. He's led this the whole way. He's guy with Dominic Suleiman running right next to him, and now Futter is going to turn it on for the bell lap. Futter won the GLIAC championship two weeks ago, running 403-29. Dreaming of a moment like this it's to win a national championship. Futter feeling some serious heat from Zlotov. Here comes Adam State. Suleiman is faded back in the pack. Coca trying to make a push. Look at Miguel Coca. He's run the fastest mile in the country this year. Does Futter have enough? Coca pushing hard. Futter going as fast as he can. And Grand Valley State wins the national championship. Caleb Futter, 4-18-02. Ran his last split, his final 300 at 38.84. Coca, the runner-up, 
Zlotov finishes third with James Dunn from Adam State in fourth. The Grizzlies with valuable team points going 2-4 in that event. Caleb Futter started in the outside, took the lead after the first 109 meters, and he never lost it, not even for a split second. Grand Valley State, the national champs. moment for the senior from Christian Academy in New Albany, Indiana. First team All-American in the steeplechase a couple times in his career in the DMR. He is as good a distance runner as we've seen in Division II for a guy that does not run at altitude. This is the defining moment of his competitive career. Just amazing. I can't imagine the pride he and his family must feel as Caleb wins the 2024 National Championship. Look at the updated team standings on the men's side now through 10 events. Grand Valley State has had a heck of a day, haven't they? They get 10 points for winning the mile. They got 20 and a half points for their three All-Americans in the high jump, including gold and silver. They won the shot put. Yesterday, four points in weight throw and five in DMR. And all of a sudden, those Lakers are looking good. Hard to imagine a better start to the day for Grand Valley State, who, by the way, I, I mean, I... I don't know. There are a lot of really impressive athletic programs in the country. But bar for bar, sport for sport, I mean, Grand Valley State, in my mind, if they're not number one, they are certainly in the conversation as the most consistently competitive athletic program in America in Division II. It feels like absolutely every single sport, every year, they are threatening to win a national championship. I don't know what they've got in the water up in Allendale, but it is incredibly impressive. Great to see Futter having success here this afternoon. Women's Mile is next on the docket, and that will begin in roughly three minutes. So let's introduce these young ladies to you. Maria Mitchell, a junior from Grand Valley State, and her teammate, Claudia O'Malley, a senior represent the Lakers here in this distance race. McKenna Thurston from Minnesota State running with hip number two. The biggest story in this race is probably the fact that Adam State is hoping to start making their push now because they're going to get into a good position here with three opportunities to score team points between freshman Vienna Lunner, junior Elena Carey, and senior transfer Gracie Hyde who previously competed at a couple different Division I schools. Kaylee Beyer has the fourth fastest women's mile in Division II history on her line 438-20. She ran 446-22 in prelims yesterday. But everybody here seems to be keeping an eye on Gracie Hyde. Hyde ran anchor leg in the DMR for Adam State yesterday, and I mean, it was laughable how far ahead she was of everybody else, some of which was her teammates doing prior to giving her the baton, but frankly, Gracie just smoked everyone in that final 1600. Hyde was 13th all-time in Division II with a 443-58. 
and then two weeks ago opened some eyeballs. More on that in a second. You see Gracie in bib eight, Elena Carey in hip seven. Kate Headland from Colorado Springs, also in this race. Haven't mentioned her. Off we go, Gracie Hyde. Uh, two weeks ago up in Seattle against mostly Division I competition. Ran a, Div a Division II provisionally adjusted time of 4.30.90. And that would be the fastest Division II mile ever run. Vienna Lauder certainly trending in the right direction. The two most competitive miles that she's ever run are her most recent two, and those are the only sub five minute miles that Vienna has ever put together. Of course, she's just a freshman. It's easy to spot the Adam State distance runners because of those bright neon jerseys. At the moment, Gracie Hyde running up front along with Kaylee Byer, who says, hey, I, I was fourth in this race a year ago for Winona State. And I know you ran in Arkansas, and I know you're really good, but I won that national championship. Byer certainly the uh, kind of competitor that can get it done. Should mention too that Claudia O'Malley, last year, she won the prelims and got into finals, but didn't have the best race in finals. Still finished fifth, nothing wrong with that, fifth nationally. Two years ago, she was the runner up, Claudia was, for Grand Valley State. So keep an eye on hip five as well and see how she tries to run this race. Right now she's middle of the pack. The two that you'd expect to be at the front are in Hyde and in Byer. The women's mile, Gracie Hyde, Kaylee Byer, Kate Headland, top three at the moment. Headland did not get out of prelims last year for Colorado Springs, but she did finish sixth as an All-American a couple seasons back. Let's see Hyde glancing up at the scoreboard down in front of her just to kind of keep an eye on some of the times there as Byer runs stride for stride with her. It'll be really fun to watch when those two women try to make their move. Might take just a little extra effort from Byer considering she's got outside positioning at the moment. Somewhere along the way, you just tell yourself, hey, I, I want to wanna run with her, and then I'll pick my moment later when we get on the straightaway. Maria Mitchell feeling some of the tension. She's in last and couldn't quite get that moving. You see Hyde lengthening her stride a little bit. A little separation now between Hyde, Byer, and Headland. Down what will be the final straightaway here shortly. There are... Two laps to go. Mitchell and Thurston fading back in the pack, along with Lonner from Adams State. There are nine women on the track. Only the top eight will score. So it is important, especially if you're Adams State, for example. Even if you're fighting for that last place spot, don't finish in last because one point can absolutely make the difference. Hyde leading the way with Bayer right behind her. Here comes Elena Carey surging into third. Carey in front of Headland. Now all of a sudden what was a bunch has really lengthened out. Bayer is right on the heels of our leader Gracie Hyde. Is this where she wants to make her move? Or will she save it for the final straightaway? Bayer is literally right with her and at the moment it's a two person race. Gracie Hyde, last split, 48-63. That was three full seconds faster than her previous 300. Feeling the tempo really increase. Bayer and Hyde, far and away, the two fastest milers in the country. How will this come out? Into the final turn. Gracie Hyde from Adams State. Kaylee Byer of Winona State eyeing the finish line. Excellent strategy from Hyde as she gets just a little bit wider. No, she can't give up anything on the inside. It won't matter anyways. Gracie Hyde crosses the finish line to win gold for the second time this week.
first as a DMR athlete, and now on her own, the Division II champion in the mile. Four thirty-eight seventy-four for Gracie Hyde. Buyer four thirty-nine eighty-six. Excellent races from each of them. Believe it or not, not quite either of their personal bests. But we did see Kerry O'Malley, Loner, Taylor, and Thurston all PR three through seven. Great job for those ladies. Kate Headland, who for a long time was right in the thick of it there in third, faded back and finished in eighth. Still scoring, though, for Colorado Springs. <laughs> Uh, Gracie clearly enjoying the moment. That's amazing. There is not a better distance runner in Division II right now than Gracie Hyde. Will a performance like that be enough to help push Adam State into the national lead? All right, time for a quick break. When we come back, we'll get ready for the men's 400. That's next on NCAA.com. We continue our events on the track with the men's 400 meter dash, and this is going to be a two section final with, as it turns out, nine instead of eight men that will run in this race because Jaden Johnson from Cedarville advances to the final on a protest yesterday. So we'll have five competitors in section one and four in section two. Just a time final, so you can win the national title out of this first section. If you run well enough, Jaden Johnson from Cedarville in lane two. Caden Williams, the freshman and the only freshman that qualified for the final from Pittsburgh State. Williams in lane three. Prince Griffin from Northwest Missouri State. The Bearcats are in lane four. It's Tim Frederick from Eastern New Mexico in lane five. And Dakari Bush from Harding in lane six. Bush, the champion last year in outdoors in the 400. Hasn't competed much this winter, but he is a stud in the Great American Conference. Let's see if we get a good time to beat here in the men's 400 in the first section. Only two guys in the finals, both in the next heat, have ever run this race sub 47 seconds. Nobody did that in prelims.
Farisa step out. Did not see what the reason for the step out was. Hopefully everybody's able to lock back in here mentally. Certainly don't want to see a false start of any kind. Lane three is given a yellow card. Warning for Caden Williams, who apologizes to the referee and then put his hands together as if to say, Thank God I didn't actually start. Williams, a freshman, I can't imagine what's going through his mind in a moment like this. Griffin in four, Frederick in five, Bush in six. Section one of this two-section national championship race. Really like what I'm seeing from Prince Griffin from Northwest Missouri. He is absolutely cruising at the moment. Nobody's even close to him through that first 200. As he hits the back stretch, feeling a little bit of heat there from the inside. They all collapse down. Good job from Hardings to Kari Bush, who actually pulled out in front of him. Bush and Griffin well in front of the field as Griffin tries to go wide. Griffin losing a little bit of steam. Bush, who is such a good sprinter in this race, sprints to the finish. Looking for the time. It is officially 46-88. Great run from Dakari Bush. That is a really good mark to beat. Will it stand up as this year's national champion? Only three men have gone sub 47 this season on the track. Bush, the fourth to do it. The problem. He has to withstand two of them coming up in section two. George Garcia and Jonah Vigil have both gone a little faster than 47 seconds this year. Now that said, that's a pretty good time for, for Bush. It is officially his PR. Prince Griffin runs a season best 47-32. Josh Page was the top seed coming in at the Great Midwest Indoor Track Championship two weeks ago. The sophomore from Tiffin ran 46-43. Far and away, the best in the country this year. But he did not perform very well, missing the finals yesterday. He finished 10th overall in prelims. And so the top national competitor is out. Jonah Vigil, the senior from Adams State, easily their best sprinter. Vigil never ran 400 at indoors, but he is an All-American in the indoor and outdoor in the 200. This year, Jonah Vigil has a chance to try and win a national championship, and he knows what time he's got to beat. He ran on January 20th. A 46.54, but that was on an altitude and uh, an altitude time and on a banked track. When he did that, though, that was the 10th fastest person in Division II history. So Vigil knows that he can go fast. How fast can he go? Ibrahim Odong and Kotu Anyika. Also on the track here, and both of them are terrific from MSU Moorhead and from Holy Family. I 
Mika's performance yesterday by more than half a second, his best this year. Years ago in this building, Trevor Bassett from Ashland set the all-time D2 championship record 45-36. The previous year, he broke the national record 45-27. We'll see if that is threatened today. Good start so far from Anjika and Vigil. On the outside, running quite well. Not great yet from Odong as the guys collapse down. It is Vigil and Anjika up at the front. Adam State, Holy Family, both running well. I beg your pardon, that's Odong in second place. My mistake. Adam State looking really good. Jonah Vigil, what's he put up? 46-93. It's officially 46-96. It's not enough. Dakari Bush from Harding. A national champion in the Great American Conference. Last year's 400 meter outdoor national champion wins it here in the indoors. A good run from Jonah Vigil. Dong finishes second, Garcia third, and Anika fourth in that heat. They went two, five, six, nine overall. So Jaden Johnson, who entered the championship final on a protest yesterday. Johnson finishes in eighth place and will score for Cedarville. One point there in the national final. Congratulations to the Harding Bison in the Great American Conference. Kari Bush, the national champion. All right, let's go to the women's podium now for the one mile race where you see three Grizzlies in fifth, third, and first. On the left there, Loner, Carey, and of course, Gracie Howe. Meter dash is scheduled for uh, it's scheduled for 6:10 local time, and it is 6:10. It appears that they're running maybe just a minute or two behind. Same deal here. It's a two-section final. There are only eight young ladies though that have qualified, where we had nine on the men's side. And frankly, this was probably the biggest surprise of the day yesterday. We're going to see the top qualifier running in our second section. As Harding tries to win on both the men's and women's side, Omolara Ogun Makanaju put up an incredible PR yesterday. Two seconds faster. Two seconds? That's incredible. In a meet like this, she went 52.77 after, during the year, not running anything faster than 54.74. A bunch of people going, where did that come from? We'll see if Omolara will bring a national title in the 400 back to Harding. 
But first, we've got some really talented women in our first section. Shura Ermakov, Anna Salisbury, Tiffany Huey, and Lusaris Toledo. Toledo and Huey both representing Northwest Missouri State. Big event for the Bearcats. They'll have one in section two as well. The Hillsdale Chargers, and Lubbock Christian also represented in this first section. Toledo owns the fourth fastest time in the country this year, 53-95, and then ran it even faster in prelims yesterday. Ermakov, Salisbury, Huey, Toledo. It's Tiffany Huey, who is the MIAA champion this year for the Bearcats, who ran the fastest time nationally at 52.65. And if somebody's going to beat Tiffany Huey this year, they're going to have to really earn it. There she is, Tiffany Huey, really pulling out front in this section here early on. Can she put up the time to beat? On the men's side, we had a winner out of Here on the women's side, too. Good race going. Huey finds herself considerably out front of her teammate. Toledo running somewhat close behind her, but losing a little bit of steam. Salisbury in third. Ermakov bringing up the rear. It's Tiffany Huey in a race against the clock. Tiffany Huey slowing down a bit, trying to put up the time to beat. She is first in the section, and she'll officially clock a 52-58. That is the new fastest time that Tiffany Huey has ever run. Just off the facility record of 52-34, set back in 2016 by Carly Mascaro. But Huey goes 52-58. My AA champion shows up here and impresses. She certainly is among the elite athletes in Division II. She competed at USA Indoors the week before conference indoors and ran a 53-27 in prelims in that race. She's also got a ton of experience on the outdoor scene. Last year, Huey finished in third with a 53 68. So she cuts off her time last year in the national championships by almost a full second. Chloe Sains, Corsia Perry, Fatumata Cabo, and yesterday's top qualifier, Omolara Ogun Makaninju, a young lady who is a first year collegiate athlete from Nigeria. Pretty remarkable. Harding has never even had anyone qualify for NCAAs in this event, let alone take home All-American status, which is guaranteed as long as you finish this race here. I mean, you just don't see a two-second drop-off from a PR in a 400 race on this kind of stage. Some rhythmic clapping in the background as the women's shot put continues. Not too far away from where our ladies will start here. Sains, Perry, Ogun Makanju, and Cabo. Time to beat 52-58. Huey, Toledo, and Salisbury, by the way, all PR'd in section one. Be a title for Northwest Missouri State. Here we go, the Lady Buffs, the Lady Bisons. Gonna try to make this fun here in section two. Excellent start there from Omolara. She's got the lead in lane five, starting to pull away just a little bit with Fatumata over on her right hip. Good job closing on the inside, Chloe Sains. Here she comes. The all-time D2 record is 51-78. We'd be stunned if we saw that fall. Great closing speed from Cabo. Fatumata Cabo trying to pass on the outside. 
She almost did it on the turn. Did she make a move too early? Obalora Ogun Makinju has pulled away. Does she have enough? The freshman from Harding. Her official time is. Wait for it. That means it's close. That's all it means. 52-85. It's a great race, but it's not enough to beat Tiffany Huey. Omolara finishes in second. In both races, our winner comes in section one. The national champion is Tiffany Huey. What an incredible moment for Huey. Talk about the peak, the mountaintop for so many of the student athletes competing here at Nationals. This is it. This is the biggest stage they'll ever compete at. And for Tiffany Huey, no matter where she goes with her career, she will always be a national champion. Northwest Missouri State wins a title here this weekend. Plenty more to come from Pittsburgh.
All right, welcome to the men's 800 meter championship final. Maxime Turan, Braxton Brewer, Dylan Madison, David Cardenas, Scott Sponstra, Harry Ross Hughes, Wes Ferguson, and Prince McCablo. All running on the track here. Wes Ferguson is certainly the favorite. Wearing bib number seven. And right now running in second place. Wes Ferguson, a senior for Nebraska Kearney, owns the second fastest time ever run in Division II history. 147.16. I guess technically he's the, the third fastest time, second fastest person. Last year's national champion, Usama El Bushabi, a freshman for Angelo State. Not running in the race this year. He ran 147.11 and 146.78. So those are marginally faster than what we've seen from Wes Ferguson in the past. But right now, the bigger story is Harry Ross Hughes, who is also having a terrific season. Young man, Harry Ross Hughes, a sophomore from Lake Erie College up in Greater Cleveland, goes out really fast here and suddenly finds out he has maybe gone out too fast. Great Midwest champion is fading a little bit. Harry Ross Hughes trying to stay involved as best he can with David Cardenas from Adams State charging hard. Cardenas, who's had a terrific season for the Grizzlies. Can either of them catch Wes Ferguson? Nebraska Kearney senior Wes Ferguson on his way to national championship. 148.13. For one of the all time great 800 athletes in Division II history. Good race from Harry Ross Hughes, who I thought went out quite fast, but just couldn't ultimately hold up. Cardenas, meanwhile, runs a PR 148.60 with two really good splits there. In his final 600, he ran 41.18, 41.08. How consistent is that? The difference between him and Ferguson was a marginally faster start and about a three-tenths faster finish. And Wes Ferguson, who looks marginally winded, but maybe not totally out of breath. Ferguson wins the national championship for Nebraska Kearney. Still good news though for Adam State, who up to the minute has now pulled within four and a half points of Grand Valley State. As the Grizzlies pull into second, it's 51 and a half to 47, with Pittsburgh State sitting on 39 points. Nothing available for the Gorillas in that race. West Texas A&M scoring there with Prince Macabolo having his PR in the 800. That got the Buffs up to 34 points as a team. Missouri Southern still sitting on 29 after yesterday's couple of national championships. All right, let's quickly go over to the men's pole vault where we only have one guy left competing. He has already won the national championship and he was far and away the favorite coming in. Vlad Malikin, a sophomore from Harding, trying to win Harding's second men's national championship today. He cleared on his first attempt at five meters, 24, 34, and 44 after passing on the first four heights. That's had an excellent season. He is the number two all-time Division II pole vaulter. Best he's ever done is 5 meters 62. And the next time he will attempt a vault, it'll be at 5 meters 60. We'll have to see if he can make that happen. Only guy that's ever been better than him. In Division Two is Billy Olson of Abilene Christian back in the 1980s. We haven't seen someone perform like Vlad in a long, long time. He's asking for everybody to get into it. Let's see if he can put together 
a good jump here. Almost, he clipped it with his shin. Certainly had enough height. Just mistimed it ever so narrowly. All right, let's check in really quickly over on the awards podium where the day continues to be a terrific one for Grand Valley State. Erica Beastly. National champion in women's shot put, 16 meters, 0.37 on her third throw. She and her teammate, Reet Thorns, are going to stand on the podium with all American honors. Congratulations to Erica. You get a chance to watch a couple of the throws in the women's shot put where Trista Fintel finished third. Catherine Higgins from CSU Pueblo, the runner up. And Erica Beisel. With this throw of 1637, good enough to win the national championship for Grand Valley State. Without a question, they are the best shot putters in the country after Miles Kerner won today on the men's side. And Erica winds up with a victory for the ladies. Pretty darn cool for GVSU here this afternoon. So the men's pole vault with Vlad Malikin having won the national title for Harding, but he is the only one still competing, trying to clear 5 meters 60. And the men's triple jump was the only field events that have not yet gone final here at the national championships. And if you're wondering what we've got left on the track, we've got the women's 800 coming up next. Then we'll have the 200, the 3K, and the 4x4 to wrap it up at the end of the night. In the women's 800, our top qualifier nationally coming in is a young lady from Ursuline College out on the east side of Cleveland, Alasia Brooks, earlier this year, just two weeks ago at conference meet, 206.64. Yesterday she ran even faster, 205.66. That was a full three seconds faster than Western Washington's Marion Ledesma, who had a, a pretty impressive performance yesterday. And Ledesma has been really good this season, but not quite that good, 208.57. Was a terrific run for Ledesma yesterday. Ledesma has gone in her career as uh, low as 207.31. It's going to take something remarkable if Brooks can run today what she did in her previous performance. It was a PR for her after when she won the Great Midwest Indoor Meet. 206.64 and then shows up and runs a second faster here at Nationals. It's a pretty big deal. The meet record and facility record was set here two years ago by Simon Frazier's Allison Andrews Paul at 2.04.04 and I really think that could be threatened here this evening. 
Division II all-time record is 203.59. That record was set back in 2019. And admittedly, a hard time believing that's going to happen, but I suppose you never know, right? We'll have to see what, uh, what we've got in store here. Elizabeth Atchison, Kate Dawson, Taryn Chapko from Grand Valley also had a really good performance yesterday. Ariel Wright, Lika Hoogstein ran the opening leg of yesterday's DMR gold medal. And Kaylee Harp from Northwest Missouri State. He's all looking around. Off we go in the championship final. Malaysia Brooks, who is in bib four, the favorite. Expect Hoogstein to go out strong. We've certainly seen strong starts from her throughout the course of the season. There she is, Brooks pulling out in front with Ledesma, not terribly far behind from Western Washington. Brooks has gone out really fast. The question will be how fast can she keep the pace going? Malaysia Brooks, 205.66. That time is the fifth fastest time in Division II history. And one of the four in front of her is on a bank track. So you are truly watching one of the all-time elite Division II 800-meter runners here. Malaysia Brooks has an enormous lead over the rest of the field. I mean, it's a good 10 to 12 meters. Brooks trying to lengthen it a little bit in what will be the final straightaway in a moment. One lap to go. Last 300 for Alasia Brooks was terrific. After her opening 200 was 28.71, that last 300 is 47.33. Nobody else was better than 48-8. A second and a half lead at the 500 mark for Alasia Brooks. Brooks with about 100 meters to go is cooking the rest of the field. Hoogstein has fallen back to seventh. Good race going for second right now between Chapko, Wright, and Atchison. Dawson in the mix too. Alasia Brooks on her way, coast to coast. She is the 2024 800 national champion. 206.97. Atchison from the University of Mary. A second place finish with a PR 208.43. Season best time for Ariel Wright from School of Mines in third. Chepko, season best in fourth. Kate Dawson PRs 209.18. She's in fifth. Then it's Harp, Hoogstein, and Ledesma to round things out. What a race for Alasia Brooks. Final, uh, final 300 for Brooks was substantially slower than what we know she's capable of. But frankly, with nobody else pushing her up at the front, she didn't really have to rev quite as hard there at the end. In fact, Elizabeth Atchison ran that last lap a full second faster than Brooks did. But Atchison was so far behind that she needed that just to get into second place, and she still lost by... A second and a half as Brooks get some congratulations there for winning the national title. All right, so the only sprint race left on the track is the 200. We'll have those coming up next and some distance races after that here on NCAA.com.
Welcome back on NCAA.com, where we just saw Alasia Brooks from the Ursuline College Arrows in Greater Cleveland. She won the uh, national championship in the 800 wire to wire, the pride of Cleveland Heights High School. Gets it done as you get a look there at the women's team standings, including Pittsburgh State uh, at the top. Pittsburgh State 55 and a half points, Adams State 51. Grand Valley State 45, Minnesota State 44. Those are your top four schools. There we go. As they duke it out trying to win the national championship, Adam State's won five times in program history. Can they win it back to back though for the first time ever? Adam State obviously did not score in the 800. Pittsburgh State did and move that lead to four and a half. Grand Valley State also with five points in that 800 from Taryn Chapko. In the women's 200, Pittsburgh State and Minnesota State both have one athlete apiece. Nobody for Adams State, but if you're a Grizzlies fan, you know what's coming up in the 3K. Feels like... Your whole team is running. <laughs> Robles, Shulkoff, Hikes, Spence, Robinson, McCleskey, and Hyde. Seven Grizzlies of the 19 total qualifying spots. That's bonkers. If you're Adam State, you're probably not horribly concerned at the moment. But it will be fun to pay attention to the 4x4 four four at the end of the night when Adam State and Pittsburgh State are in two separate heats but both competing in the relays. All right. By the way, I'm not sure if we have any uh, coverage of it, but want to at least share with you that Vlad Malikin, on his third try, did clear the uh, pole vault at 5 meters 60, which is certainly a great mark for him. So he keeps on pushing forward. The bar will then go to five meters, 74. We go back to the award stand here real quick. More on Vlad in just a minute. As we get a look at the uh, young men who are in the, I believe this was the men's 800, correct? With Kearney, or uh, excuse me, uh, Ferguson from Nebraska Kearney. Second win for him in two years time. Here comes Wes. All right, the next event on the track will be the men's 200-meter dash, where the all-time Division II record holder and championship meet record holder is Trevor Bassett from Ashland three years ago in 2021. Here won the national championship in 20.48. That is crazy fast. Nobody in our heats yesterday went faster than Jabez Reeves at 21-13. Dos Santos, Luna Verhoff, and Sterling are off. Who's going to win the first of two sections and try to put up the time to beat? Excellent play there from Luna in Lubbock Christian in lane four. Running quite well, but is it well enough for the Finley Oilers? Oilers, excuse me, Josh Verhoff to the tape. And I believe he won the race. Verhoff, 21-14. Time to beat there for the Oilers. Kaimani Sterling finishes in second, then Dos Santos and Luna. 
Josh Verhoff. Fabulous effort, 21-14. That is six one-hundredths faster than we saw from him in prelims yesterday. Verhoff had the third fastest time in the country coming in at 21.07. So it's not his best even this year, but it's certainly not far off of that. All right, our top qualifier nationally coming in was Franklin Pierce Jr. Stephen Harris at 21 flat. He did that at the NE10 championships when he won the conference title three weeks ago. Takari Charlton, who's also in this race, has run 21.04 this year. He did that back in early February at the Washburn Open. The 21 seconds for Harris is the fastest he's ever run. Same story for Charlton. Jabez Reeves, 21.13 yesterday, was a fabulous performance. And then Tim Frederick from Eastern New Mexico, also plenty capable. This is his second championship final of the day. He came in ninth in the country in this event, but he is the champion in the Lone Star this year. Let's see if Frederick, who is an elite sprinter, can get it done. Charlton from Pittsburgh State, Frederick of Eastern New Mexico, Reeves of Minnesota State, and Harris from Franklin Pierce. Time to beat 21.14. Guys are getting ready to get in their blocks on the opposite side of the track there. Also some eyes on the pole vault which is basically just next to them. Got to look there at Harris, trying to calm his mind before we get started. Harris, Reeves, Frederick, Charlton. They have to be 21-14 from Josh Verhoff. Great start by Dakari Charlton from Pitt State. Harris is starting to pick it up on the outside. Harris running well. Reeves, who was the top qualifier yesterday, is scooting quickly. Harris is right with him. Reeves and Harris will be first to the line. It is Jabez Reeves. Did he win? Yes, 21-09. The fastest run of his life is good for a national championship. Jabez Reeves. What a moment for Minnesota State. They've had some terrific athletes for a long time, especially on the ladies' side, but nobody has put forth the kind of performance we've seen from Jabez Reeves the last few years, certainly in the 200. Our defending champion was from Carson Newman and did not make the field this year. We've certainly seen some guys with All-American performances, even Joel Dos Santos, who last year was an All-American and will follow it up this year with a fifth place finish. But Jabez Reeves is your national champion. In the meantime, time for Alasia Brooks to enjoy her moment atop the podium as your national champion in the women's 800.
Congratulations to Brooks. All the ladies get up there and tighten up for a big photo. That's uh, a fun moment. So we'll have the women's 200 meter dash next where some of those ladies have already started to meander over to their blocks. Our defending champion is back in the field and she'll run in section two. It's Alexis Brown who's already had a memorable day. Alexis Brown was just crazy in the 60 meter, setting a PR with a 7.18. She beat Denisha Cartwright to win the national championship in the 60. Cartwright won the 60 meter hurdles earlier today, where she and her teammates, Brewster and Foster, went 1 2 3 at the top. And now we'll see Brown and Cartwright both competing in the championship finals of the 200. But they'll do it in separate sections. Kaya Epps from Walsh University in lane three. Kalanique Farrington from Southwest Baptist in four. Deandronique Gaines of Pitt State here in lane five. And Cartwright in lane six. There are your lane assignments. Give you an idea, last year when Brooks, I beg your pardon, when uh, Brown won the national championship as a freshman, she ran the race in 23-26, which was a tenth faster than Ayana Fields of Cal Poly Pomona last year. There are several young women who are in this race again this year that were all Americans last year. It is Cartwright though whose adjusted time of 22.32 is the best in the country. Her unadjusted 23.30 would still be fastest nationally. Marie Eloise Leclerc from Simon Fraser, the GNAC champion, she'll run in section two. Kalanick Farrington won the conference championship for the Great Lakes Valley Conference for Southwest Baptist. She's in lane four right now. Alexis Brown, certainly the favorite to win this event for the second year in a row. She is the all-time D2 record holder after winning last year's national championship. And she'll be in section two. Cartwright is fourth nationally. Farrington, sixth all-time in D2. So this should be an elite level race. Epps, Farrington, Gaines, and Cartwright. Off they go. Epps on the inside, Cartwright on the outside. Denisha Cartwright, one of the electrifying sprinters that you'll ever see. She's feeling a little bit here from Gaines, but it is Cartwright out front. As we get into the final stretch, look how close this is. Exceptionally little separation. Who wants it more? It looks like Gaines. Now it's Cartwright exploding to the finish. A photo finish, and the winner is Gaines. Wow. 23-60 for DeAndrene Gaines. Three one-hundredths in front of Cartwright. Season best time for Denisha Cartwright, and it wasn't fast enough with Gaines flying in that last little stretch. DeAndrene Gaines, the fastest she's ever gone is 23.55.
which puts her inside the top 15 all time. But it was only the third fastest this year. And yet DeAndre Gaines, a real gamer. She saw Cartwright coming and put up an incredible last little effort there. 23.60, time to beat. Okay, Lauren James from the Academy of Art, Corsia Perry from West Texas A&M, Marie Eloise LeClaire of Simon Frazier, and your defending champion and all-time record holder, Alexis Brown of Lenore Rhine. Alexis Brown has a chance to become one of the truly elite Division II sprinters. If she can keep up this kind of effort throughout her career. Brown in good form coming off having won the South Atlantic Championship. She was great last year in the outdoor season two, finished runner up in the 100. Finished in fifth in the outdoor 200. Lots of All-American honors on her tab, but none more prominent than the all-time record in this race, 23-26. Alexis Brown won the 60 earlier. Can she win a second national title? Here we go. Brown in six, James, Perry, and LeClaire inside of her. Off they go. Pretty fair start, especially in the outside. Brown and LeClaire really fast out of the gate. Perry struggling a little bit, trying to play catch up. James running well for the Academy of Art in three. It's Brown in first place with LeClaire striding past her as they hit the flat away. Here we go. It's LeClaire and Brown. Alexis Brown turns it on, and she is first to the tape. Is it fast enough to beat Gaines? Yes, it is. 23-32. Alexis Brown has won both the 60 and the 200. LeClaire finishes in second overall at 23-46. DeAndre gains a third place finish. 23-32 for Alexis Brown. That is only six hundredths off of her all-time record-setting race. In fact, the 23-32 is the second fastest time ever run. So she now owns the top two marks ever in Division II in the 200. Congratulations, Alexis Brown. What a championship for the sprinter from Lenore Rhine.
All right, let's check in really quick over on the men's pole vault. This is the last attempt at 5 meters 74 for Harding sophomore Vlad Malikin. And if he clears this, he will break the all-time Division II record by one centimeter. Final attempt after a couple of misses for the guy who's already won the national championship. Oh, just missed it. Clipped it with his ankle on the way up. A terrific effort from Vlad Malikin. And a second national championship of the day for the Harding Bison men. Congratulations to the Great American Conference, well represented here this week at the national meet. And so the only remaining men's field event with the women's field events having all concluded remaining field event is the triple jump where Shamar Miller right now is attempting triple jump. That's a pretty good jump for him. He's in fourth place leading up to that, 1557. The leaders at 1579 with Trey Betts from Pitt State PRing back in the second round. So not much separating the guys at the top. Lloyd McCurdy from Limestone in second. Chiron Kemp in third. And that jump from Miller is 15.36, which is just a little short of his best jump so far. We're in round five in triple jump. All right, getting ready for the men's 3,000 meter race. And if something remarkable happens on triple jump, we'll try to pop over there and make sure we don't miss that for you. In the meantime, a 3K for the guys. And the top 3K in the country this year belongs to Miguel Coca, who is in the field for Adams State. He almost always is a huge factor in a race like this. Caleb Futter, who won the mile is in the field. See if he can double up. His best 3K this year is 8 minutes, 0.81. The all-time Division II record holder, though, Coca, earlier this year at 7 minutes, 44.9 at the Boston University Valentine Invitational. Did it about, well, actually, Today's the ninth, right? Yep, a month ago today, Miguel Coca set the all-time D2 record with Loic Skomperin and Hamza Shahid running in that same race with him, and they were all really fast. These guys are all in the field. Shahid from Wingate won the 5K yesterday. to see how these guys all put it together. Uh, those three times from Coca, Skomperin, and Shahid. Actually, I just checked, they are the three fastest times in Division II history. That must have been a particularly fun day up in Boston. These guys all get ready. Meantime, away from where these guys are standing, Trey Betts, who is in first place 
for Pittsburgh State, having already jumped a PR 15-79 in the triple jump. Just maintained his lead as they start the final round of jumps there. We'll keep you updated. Off we go in the men's 3K. Somewhere along the way in this race, we will give you an update on the men's team scores as well. Trying to tell you exactly where everybody stands at the end of the meet. It is tight at the top. As Pittsburgh State tries to win a national championship here at home, they are in third place with four events still to be scored. Among them here, the 3K. Grand Valley State, you're rooting hard for Caleb Flutter. He is the only Laker in the field here. Adams State, well, they've got three in the field, including Coca, Jonas Hale, and Dayton Brown. Pittsburgh State, not really a school that has national caliber distance runners. There are more in the sprints and in the field events. At the moment, the leader in the field here is Dayton Brown from Adams State. Some other guys to keep your eye on, Josh Peary and Tony, Tyler Nord, Ricardo Barbosa, Paul Knight, Kevin McDermott, Duncan Fune, Jonas Hale, William Empolnosa, Sohel Bufrizi, Simon Kalati, really like what we've seen from him this year out at Western Colorado. Matthew Storer from Colorado Christian. Josephat Melli from Harding. Coca running toward the back at the moment, along with his teammate Jonas Hale. Men's 3K, Dayton Brown. This double waterfall. Brown leading the way for Adam State. Just like that, right as I say, he gives it up to Storer. Christian 1-2 with Josh Peary and Tony also at the front. Good look there at Ricardo Barbosa running in third place. Seven laps remaining in the men's 3,000 meter final. It is Storer, Peary and Tony Josephat Melli, Barbosa, and Brown as the top five with Empanosa and Kalati there close behind him. All right, so the men's triple jump and the men's pole vault the final two men's field events. They have not yet updated the results on the team standings to reflect the pole vaulters. But hopefully soon we will see the latest update with essentially still only three events left here on the, uh, on the men's side. Without the pole vault and triple jump scored, and of course the 3K and the 4x4. Four Grand Valley State leading by four and a half points over Adams State, and then Pittsburgh State is sitting on 40. One time back to triple jump for a moment. Travion Ferguson is in sixth place for Pittsburgh State. This obviously is pretty important for him. He's got to try to make this happen. The further up the chart he goes, the more points he can score for the Gorillas. They need everything they can get here. Ferguson gave it his absolute best. White flag is up, so it's a fair jump. He sits in sixth place at 1544. That came in his third round as we peek back in on the men's 3K with Ricardo Barbosa leading the way. Ferguson still waiting for his score. Ferguson jumped 15.05. 
Four laps to go in the men's 3K. It's Barbosa leading the way through the first 1800 at 49.09, his last split. Losing a little bit of ground to Josephat Melli from Harding. Gosh, Harding's had a great day today. Kaladi in third, and Bonassa in fourth, Tyler Nord in fifth. Adam State with three guys in the field, and they're all hanging tough at the moment, but there are two Adam State Grizzlies that are toward that front pack. One that has fallen back a little bit. It's Coca and Hale who are toward the front after Dayton Brown went out early and tried to set the pace maybe for those other guys. Who's going to win the national championship in the men's 3,000 meter? Nobody has ever run faster than Miguel Coca from Adams State, 744.90. Defending national champion in this event is Hamza Shahid at 8 minutes 35 with Coca in second. Tyler Nord finished with a bronze last year. Two years ago, there were two times that were sub eight. Titus Winders won for Southern Indiana. Isaac Harding finished in second. They both went 757 and change. We didn't see a race quite that fast this year. Who knows? A couple laps to go. Simon Kalati in first place for Western Colorado. Then it's Wingate's Suhel Bufrizi. Coca's made his way up into third. So Coca was pretty content running toward the back of the pack. In fact, at one point he was in 15th place at the 900 meter mark and then slowly has chipped away. Moving up further and further at the 2100 mark. Coca was in 10th. Moved seven spots forward last lap and here he is trying to make that push on Kilati. Miguel Coca, the all-time record holder with one lap to go. Oh, he's almost passed on the inside. That was pretty good defensive running. I believe that was Shahid that was trying to run inside and it threw him off a little bit. There he is, the defending champion running in third. Coca on the straightaway looking for that Opportunity to pass, he says, okay, I'll wait. Boy, this is turning into a fun race. Kalati has run so good all year and was just not able to get it done yesterday in the 5K. But this is gonna be a heck of a finish. Skoparin is not out of this either. It's Kalati, it's Shahid, it's Coca. Who wants it more? Three guys, photo finish. Oh no! Who crosses first? It's officially Kalati, 757-62. He beats Miguel Coca. With a personal record time, Simon Kalati from Western Colorado, the national champion. Last year's champ, Shahid, who had fallen Trying to get back to his feet as quickly as possible. Finishes in fourth place as he crossed that line for Wingate. He and his teammate Bufrizi finished in fourth and fifth. As we look at this close one more time, giving everything they've got. And Shahid just lost it. Coca, who also ultimately fell to the ground, at least had done so after crossing the finish line. But nobody able to keep pace at the end there with Simon Kalati. If you're an Adams State fan wondering how this impacts your national championship aspirations, this is tough to hear. Coca finishes in second. Jonas Hale finished in ninth. He just missed the podium. Dayton Brown finishes in 11th. So only one Grizzly scores. Eight points for Adam State there, but Adam State isn't quite done yet. They're not all the way home. It is going to be enough, I believe, to move them into first place. We still need to see how triple jump goes. 
Let's take a look here at triple jump. This is the very last jump, and it's going to come from Trey Betts, who's already clinched a victory for Pittsburgh State. So Pittsburgh State, who has 40 team points before this event goes final, they're going to finish first and sixth. How high can Trey Betts go? Let's see. Betts gave it his all. He's already PR'd in this event today. He's jumped more than 15 meters four times. The Gorillas win a national championship in triple jump. Betts goes 1570. It's another great effort, but not enough to move him forward. Outstanding. Well, on the men's side, the only events that have not officially been scored yet are triple jump, 3K, and 4x4. Four four. So before we see Pittsburgh State add to their point total, it's Grand Valley State 51 and a half, Adams State 47, and Pittsburgh State 46. With the triple jump points from Pitt State, I think that's going to be enough to move them forward into the lead. I'm looking quickly. There are no Lakers, and no Grizzlies that were competing on triple jump. So they're going to score 13 points in triple jump. As you're looking at the pole vault award, uh, the podium awards. Harding wins the national championship. We'll look at a couple of highlights from that in just a moment. Congratulations to Vlad Malkian. Here are a couple looks at the uh, men's pole vault today, which included Grayson Smith from Pittsburgh State finishing in third place this is grayson here and it's a great mark for him a pr clearing five meters 34 and those are very valuable points scoring six for the gorillas on pole vault with thomas nieto from texas a m kingsville in runner-up spot and vlad mulkian clearing five meters 60 the number two all-time pole vaulter in division two men's history Unable to break the all-time record at 5 meters 74, but he is your national champion. All right, on the ladies' side, we only have two events left, the women's 3K and the 4x4. The up-to-date standings include Pittsburgh State 61 and a half, Adams State 51, Minnesota State 49, Grand Valley State 45. But... There are a bunch of Grizzlies in this field. And if you're Pittsburgh State, frankly, it feels like this race might matter even more than the 4x4. There are 19 women about to run the 3K. Seven of them are from Adams State. Only the top eight will score for the team on the podium. Off we go. Brianna Robles, Emily Shulkoff, Morgan Hikes, Tristan Spence, Precious Robinson, Maggie McCleskey, and the great Gracie Hyde from Adams State are all out there in the 3K. Robles was the runner-up yesterday in the 5K. You can see a lot of those neon jerseys toward the front. Other competitors include Eleonora Kurtabi, Florence Uwajaneza, who won the 5K yesterday. They both run for West Texas A&M, as does Sarah Coombson. McKenna Kavanaugh from Lee, Natalie Graber of Grand Valley, Margot Bassert from Colorado School of Mines. She and her teammate Zoe Baker, both in the field. Claudia O'Malley and Lauren Kiley, also of Grand Valley. 
Anna Foskey from Colorado Springs. Leah Taylor from Western Colorado. Kaylee Beyer, we just saw that great one mile sprint at the end from Beyer and from, uh, uh, from Hyde. And here we go, after the first 300, it's Robles, Hyde, Bayer, Kurtabi, Robinson, Uwajaneza. Those are your top six. Morgan Hikes is in there as well. Adam State feels like they've got a really good chance this weekend to win back-to-back -back national titles for the first time in program history. Even though they have been so good for so long, they've never gone back to back. Five titles in all as a team. And I guarantee you that as a group, they all went out and said, look, the relays are going to be important for sure. But we've got a chance, if we can run as a team here, go out and make something really special happen. Let's see if the Grizzlies can get it done. Right now, they're in good position. Robles leading the way, Kurtabi right on her tail in second, then it's Hyde, Bayer, Uwajaneza, Robinson, Coomson, Hikes, Bassert, Spence in that order. One through 10. One of the Grizzly fans and other student athletes on the far side of the track cheering them on. Still have not scored the points associated with men's triple jump officially on the team tally, but it can't be much longer until we see those updated. Robles leads the way. Tabi is right there with her. Good running from a few other ladies in the field. Sarah Coomson competing well there. Also, Kaylee Byer from Winona State pushing her way toward the front of the pack. Long way to go still in this women's 3,000. They are only 1,200 in after crossing the, the line there. We have six laps remaining here. If you're Adam State, there is some element here of race strategy for sure. You're trying to maximize individual uh, finishes, but you want all the right team points. Adam stayed at that last touch. They were in first, third, seventh, nine, 10, 11, 12. Robles has led the way from the very get-go. Running pretty consistently between 57 and 59 seconds. Kurtabi started in fourth place early, moved to second, and then is held strong. It remains that way at the moment with two Grizzlies at the front. Hyde starting to make a little bit of a move there on the inside, forcing Kurtabi to Quicken her tempo just a bit around that outside curve. Haven't seen a change in any of the top eight spots. In fact, the first change came between spots 10 and 11, so the top nine held steady. They're halfway home, and then some. They cross. The timeline here, that will be the 1800 mark in this 3K. Defending national champion in this event is Stephanie Cotter from Adams State. 
Robles was the national runner-up last year. This was an area where Adams State expected they would score and perform well. Ava O'Connor, a sophomore from a year ago, she also was an All-American. Last season, they had four young women that did not score. Paredes, Robinson, Shulkoff, and Hikes all, unfortunately, missed the podium. Let's see if Adam State can have a different go around here this time. Robles, Kotabi, Hyde all at the front with Bayer, Yuwajanesa, Kumsin all there too. So O'Malley fade a little bit from Grand Valley. Also been a little bit challenging there toward the back of the pack for Leah Taylor, Western Colorado. Change at the top. At the 2100 mark, Kaylee Beyer. Every single point matters. Robles looking like maybe she wants to go on the outside. She got hit a couple times by that right arm from Bayer as Hyde passes on the inside on the straightaway. Wow, didn't see that coming. Gracie Hyde saw the opening and took it. Well, now fewer than three laps to go. Hyde three-tenths of a second faster than Bayer on that previous lap. So it's Hyde, Bayer, Robles, then Kurtabi. As Bayer said, hey, I didn't like getting passed on that last straightaway on the inside, he took me off. <laughs> so she goes back on the outside and says, let's roll. Gracie Hyde in the mile beat Kaylee Byer by a full 1.1 seconds. Hyde won the national championship in the mile after running anchor in the DMR yesterday. Time for the bell lap, and it is Byer who has gone a little bit further out front. If you're an Adams State fan, you need to see some of those highlighter jerseys toward the front. Look at Gracie Hyde. She was toying with Bayer. Passes her on the turn. Can Gracie Hyde turn it on? Oh, my goodness. That's incredible. Hyde let Bayer feel like she was going to do it. And Gracie says, come and get me. We've got 100 meters to go, and Gracie Hyde is smoking Bayer. Does Kaylee have anything left? Can she come back? Adam State with the best distance runner in America. It's Gracie Hyde, your national champion. Robles finishes in third. Hyde wins the 3K with Bayer in runner-up. Followed by Robles, Kurtabi. A season best for Florence Uajaneza and Sarah Coombson PRs. West Texas A&M goes 4-5-6. Great showing for the Lady Buffs. Lauren Kylie and Natalie Graber, the Lakers are in seventh and eighth. And that closes out Adams State. No other Grizzlies are on the podium. It's only Hyde and Robles. Good news for the Grizzlies. They get points for first and third. Those are great but the potential to absolutely squash the field going into the relays is gone. And now the relays are really gonna matter. Can you believe it, Gracie Hyde? You've won three national championships this weekend. The grad student from Benton, Arkansas. One of the moments of her life.
getting a look at the podium presentation for the men's triple jump, but I can tell you with certainty now, on the ladies' side, the updated standings, Adam State has taken the lead, 67 points. Pittsburgh State, 61 and a half in second. Minnesota State has fallen back to third with 49 points. Meanwhile, congratulations to Trey Betts. Betts PR'd with 15 meters, 79. And the men's triple jump, and Pittsburgh State wins the national championship in the triple jump. They s still have not quite updated the scoring, though, on the team standings. As you look here at a couple of the better triple jumps that we saw throughout this meet. Chiron Kemp from MSU Moorhead finishes in third at 15 meters 60. That's Lloyd McCurdy from Limestone, who his sixth and final jump put him at 15.73, which moved him a little closer, but ultimately not quite enough to catch that guy. Trey Betts, this year's national champ. <laughs> Trey Betts and Travion Ferguson. Both of them All-Americans. Ferguson finished sixth for the Gorillas with 15.44. I wonder if there might be some sort of scoring discrepancy or perhaps a protest that's preventing some of those events from going final. I'm not entirely sure. How about that? Right as I say that, they have now officially updated the men's standings as you're looking at the women's first. So Adam State 67, Pittsburgh State 61 and a half, Minnesota State and Grand Valley are fighting there for third. It is theoretically possible that someone other than Adam State or Pittsburgh State could win the national championship, but it is awfully unlikely that that would happen. But in the women's four by four coming up here in a little bit, Adam State will be in Heat 2. Pittsburgh State will be in Heat 3. So the only events we have left in this national championship meet are the 4x4 four four relays coming up. In the meantime, on the men's side, having scored now the triple jump officially, it's Pittsburgh State 59, Grand Valley State 51 and a half, Adam State 47, West Texas A&M 34. Missouri Southern 29. Those are your top five, having not yet officially seen the men's 3K results factored in, which should give Miguel Coca and Adam State another eight points. Again, expecting things to go the way that uh, they appear. Adam State should be up to 55 total points. Grand Valley State did not have any one score in the 3K, and uh, neither did Pittsburgh State. Again, the bigger disappointment for Adam State is the fact that they finished second, ninth, and 11th in the 3K. So that means that Dayton Brown and Jonas Hale were unable to score, even though Jonas Piard and Dayton Brown had his season best, and they should certainly be proud of those times. He's just missing the point scoring opportunities associated with those. All right, well, the 4x4 relay is scheduled to begin in about 10 minutes. So why don't we take a quick break here and I uh, promise as soon as we get an update on the men's standings, just to make sure that those are official. I don't anticipate any changes from what I mentioned to you, but just in case, we'll let you know. And we'll get you ready for the 4x400 meter relay to close out the 2024 National Championships next on NCAA.com.
All right, bringing the men's team standings uh, to you live here as we get ready for uh, the podium presentations for the uh, 3,000 meter races, both men and women. And want to let you know there that these are now official through 16 events, and that's great news for Pittsburgh State because Adam State does not have a team in the 4 by 400 meter relay. And that means that it's locked up for Pitt State uh, over the Grizzlies, but it's not official over Grand Valley State. But when you lead by seven and a half points over the Lakers going into this race, there's a heck of a lot more wiggle room than there is when you lead by four points. You get 10 for winning your event, eight for coming in second, uh, six points for third, and working your way back, six, five, four, three, two, one for those who finish third place through eighth place on the podium. So there are very few ways in which Grand Valley State can beat Pittsburgh State and Adams State in this national championship coming up. Pittsburgh State on the men's side last year was the number two four by four relay team in the country at the national championships. They were runner up, I beg your pardon, uh, last year Pittsburgh State won it. Two years ago they were runner up to the Ashland Eagles. This year, Pittsburgh State's best 4x4 relay team has gone fifth. Grand Valley State's best relay performance was eighth nationally. So if you're a gorilla, you feel really good going into the 4x4 that you're going to win the team trophy on the men's side, but it is not officially over yet. You just know that you can't finish worse than second because Adam State can't catch you in the relays. On the ladies' side, Adams State 67 points, Pittsburgh State 61 and a half, Minnesota State 49, Grand Valley State 48. And so that means that the Mavericks and the Lakers, despite really good showings here this week, are unable to get into those top two spots. But it's also not over because Adams State and Pittsburgh State both have teams scheduled to run the 4x4 relay, and they're obviously separated by five and a half points, which means it is possible for that to flip. Adam State needs to have a good performance on the ladies' side coming up shortly. But first, we'll have in the men's race the 4x400 meter relay. The all time Division II record is incredibly old, all things considered. 1995. St. Augustine's ran 308.21. The facility record here in Kansas, 307.68 two years ago. We are off and going. Tiffin, Lenore Rhine, Mississippi College, and Angelo State. Your first 400s are coming from Malachi Adams, Olawole Olan Raju, Grayson Foster, and Charles Frimpong. Best race of the year for the Tiffin Dragons, 312.56. That was at the great, uh, great Midwest Conference meet that just got them in the field. Getting ready for our first handoff at the end of this straightaway. Tiffin in good shape so far. Malachi Adams has had a really good showing here at this national championship. Off we go, handoff here, leg two. Michael McNeil. Clarence McGill, Evan Wrights, and Max Wasmer for Tiffin, Lenore Ryan, Mississippi College, and Angelo State. Angelo State's best showing came on February 9th at the Jarvis Scott Open. Tiffin has fallen into second place. Leading the pack, Lenore Ryan with Clarence McGill. 
fighting his way. Crossing what will become the finish line shortly. Getting ready for a handoff. Lenore Ryan running well. Mississippi College running just fine. Tiffin is in the mix. Here we go, third guys on the track. It's Lewis Cotterill for Tiffin. Bamadele Ajayi for Lenore Ryan. Gabe Hudson of Mississippi College and Bossman Pinkra for Angelo State. Pinkra is in last place, but looking for a way to make a move here. Pretty impressive form so far for the Bears. Perform this season. Final handoff. Nicely done. Joshua Page from Tiffin. He was the top seed nationally in the 400. He's got a long way to go to catch up, though. Marcus Crumpler, Connor Stewart, and Tristan Guerrero all on the track as well. Look at the move there from Connor Stewart. Mississippi College has pulled into first place. Crumpler right on his heels. Then a ton of separation with Angelo State and Tiffin lagging behind. Stewart and Crumpler, who can hang on? Did Stewart go too fast, too quickly? Here comes Lenore Ryan on the outside. Stewart trying like crazy to hold him off and he's not gonna be able to do it. Fighting all the way to the finish line, the Bears win the first section. Olan Rawaju, McGill, Ajayi, and Crumpler put up the time to beat at 3-10-76. Well done by Lenore Ryan. Far and away, their top mark of the season. All right, so 310.76. Actually, Lenore Ryan, I believe, may have just broken a school record. It's listed on our stat sheet, or live scoring here, that that is a personal record for the Bears. Congratulations, that's great. All right, on the men's side, this is a big race here for the implications in our national uh, team trophy ampl uh, uh, ramifications because the only two teams that are running that have a chance to really have something to say about it are in this heat. Meanwhile, Gracie Hyde and Brianna Robles are going to be recognized along with Bayer for the women's 3K. Harding, Grand Valley State, Pittsburgh State, and Lubbock Christian. We'll run here in section two for the men's four by four. Hyde has made herself rather comfortable atop that podium. Gosh, she has been fun to watch this week. All right, everybody fired up in the nearby stands. Many of them are Gorilla fans. Top four by four national team this year is coming up in the next section. But the defending national champions are in this race. Pittsburgh State, last year they ran 309-63. They've got a different looking group scheduled to run this year. Grand Valley State trails Pittsburgh State overall by seven and a half points. So Grand Valley State has to come in first or second overall and hope that Pittsburgh State does not have a great race. That's the only way the Gorillas will not win the men's team title. We won't know it until section three is over, but might get a decent feel for it here.
Brian Singleton for Harding, Zach Prey for the Lakers, Dakari Charlton of Pittsburgh State, and Nathaniel Luna for Lubbock Christian. The first leg of the four by four. Pittsburgh State and Grand Valley State as a team are the last two national champions. Pittsburgh State also won it all as a group back in 2018. They're trying to win a third of championship in program history. So far so good for the Lakers. Pittsburgh State running in second place, but nothing wrong with this. Prey and Charlton lead the way, waiting for the first handoff. Here we go. For Harding, it's Dakari Bush who's going to take the second handoff. Of course, he won the 400 earlier today. Expect Harding to make a move here. Falu Gay from Grand Valley. DePriest Hogan's a Pittsburgh State junior and Chris Rader for Lubbock Christian. Hogan's was in the final of the 400 as well. He and Bush are the fastest two guys on the track, but we'll see if they can actually make that happen. Look at Hogan's. There's power but finesse at the same time in this stride. Excellent. Great tempo from Hogan's. He has widened the lead for Pittsburgh State considerably. The Gorillas know they could basically put this in their own hands if they win this section and have the top time going into the final section, they'll win the national championship regardless of what happens. After the third handoff, it's Samuel Williams, Ben Ireland, Wayne Chapman, and Keetron Boyd. The time to beat is 3.10.76. Pittsburgh State's best time this year is 3.11.26. Down the back stretch, things still looking solid for Chapman. It'll be some kind of party here in Pittsburgh, Kansas, if the Gorillas can pull this off. Final handoff, here we go. Derek St. Jean for Harding, Miles Rhodes for Grand Valley, the freshman Caden Williams leading the way here with George Garcia of Lubbock Christian for this final leg. Grand Valley running in second behind Pittsburgh State. The further we go along here, the more and more this looks like Gorilla Glory. Caden Williams around the final curve and into the final straightaway. Grand Valley charging hard from behind. Miles Rhodes trying to make it close. Williams on his way. Pittsburgh State with a terrific race. That should do it. It's official, 309.78. Grand Valley State comes in second, 310.99 in that heat. The Lakers are third overall through the first two sections of time finals. Even if all four schools in the third section beat Pittsburgh State, and if the Gorillas finish fifth overall in this race, they will still win the 2024 National Championship as a team. It's a back-to-back -back affair for the Gorillas. This one more special, though, they do it here at home. Season best time for the Gorillas in the 4x4, 309.78. Certainly get the impression that the Gorillas are <laughs> Gonna walk around the whole track and let everybody know just how much fun they've had this weekend. Is it truly a victory lap? I suppose we should wait until the scores officially come in. But the Gorillas certainly believe what the rest of us think we've learned. That they are the 2024 national champions. All right, for as much fun as Pittsburgh State is having, there are still four other schools 
that want to win a national title this week. And they could try to do it here in this event. The top four times by seed coming in belong to Academy of Art, St. Augustine's, Lincoln, and Northwest Missouri State. And they'll all run here in section three. For the Bearcats in lane three, it's Prince Griffin. Lincoln has Emmanuel Rawatimia in lane four. Sharice Ham in five for Academy of Arts. And Sean Kalawan from St. Augustine's in six. Sharice Ham, Academy of Art. The opening leg for the fastest qualifying time in the country. Back at the Grand Valley State University Big Meet back on February 9th. That was before the conference championships. Academy of Art went up there and posted a 3-10-53. Time for the first handoff. Danny Jansen for Northwest Missouri State. Shanthamoy Brown from Lincoln. Amari and Harrell for St. Augustine's. Oma Diagabi Obo for Academy of Art. Here's Obo at the front of the pack. Oh, good move there on the outside from Harold. He is trying to make something happen. Harold losing a little bit of ground though because Brown has such long strides. Northwest Missouri State with Jansen holding ground. He did a good job there on that curve. And he'll hand off in first place for the Bearcats. Truman Hare, Leandre Francis, Robin Black, and Isaiah Chapman all on the track. Time to beat to win a national title in this event is 309.78. Pittsburgh State last year won the national title at 309.63. Academy of Art was the national runner-up, 309-72. Grand Valley State was third last year, 311-07, so the Lakers could wind up on the podium with a, a 310-99 this year. Northwest Missouri State cruising along nicely. How big a lead can they give themselves as the handoff goes to Gavin Monday? Kawani Campbell for Lincoln, Josh Marlin for Academy of Art, and Kaitlin Perry all on the track. Monday has a huge lead, but can he hold it? There is significant speed behind him. Bell lap, the final lap for the 2024 Indoor National Championship meet. Northwest Missouri State last year missed the podium. They finished 10th this year. They've got a chance to rewrite history. Academy of Art falling way back into third place. Northwest Missouri State, can they beat 309-78? It's going to be close. That first time's unofficial. It is 309-86. They missed it. Pittsburgh State repeats as the 4x4 champions. The Bearcats come in second. Overall, Lenore Ryan in third, Grand Valley in fourth. Lincoln and Academy of Art are all Americans sixth and seventh, but there is nobody having more fun than the Pittsburgh State Gorillas. They win the four by four and 
the team national championship. Three hundred nine seventy eight. by the way, is not a program record for Pittsburgh State. But it is the eighth fastest time ever run in Division II 4x4 history. Congratulations on a terrific weekend to these host gorillas who were just incredible in the sprint events and sprinkled in some awesome performances in a few of the field events as well. Ultimately, Pittsburgh State scores 69 points. They got obviously the national championship in the four by four but it felt like they scored in almost everything. They scored in the DMR, the 60, the 200, the 400, the mile, the 60 hurdles, the pole vault, and the triple jump. Pittsburgh State was incredible. By the way, Grand Valley State, as we get ready for the ladies, the Lakers do get past Adams State by one and a half points. Thanks to the five points they scored there in the 4x4, four four, Grand Valley State is going to be your national runner-up. Congratulations to the Lakers on a great season. Okay, we also have the women's 4x4, four four, and this will feature four sections of finals. We have two schools in the first section here. We'll have three in the second, and then four schools each in the third and fourth sections of finals. And we'll be certainly watching closely here because the women's championship is not yet decided. Ashland and Lubbock Christian running here first. Elizabeth Adams and Elizabeth Flores. To remind you, on the ladies' side, Adams State, 67 points. Pittsburgh State, 61 and a half. Minnesota State 49. If Minnesota State wins this race, the most they can get is 59. Grand Valley State, if they win, the most they can get is 58. So nobody other than Adams State and Pittsburgh State can win the national title. But they both have teams in the 4x4, four four, and it will depend upon how they perform to see who wins the women's national championship. It would be surprising, though, as we have... Our first handoffs as Maddie Stacy and Annika Bukes are on the track here. It would be surprising if someone other than Angelo State wins this race because back on February 10th, just about a month ago at this point, Angelo State put together the all-time Division II record-breaking performance, 336-14. So we'll see if somebody can maybe find a way to knock them out. It'll be tough, though. Getting ready for our third handoff. Ashland and Lubbock Christian. It'll be Jade Avance and Rihanna Argolin. Lubbock Christian. At the moment, Lubbock Christian cruising along. Best time for LCU this year, 345.79. Ashland's top mark, 344.87. Yeah. Boy, we have seen a, a good closing stretch there from Jade Avance. Ashland has brought this much tighter. This third leg has been great for them. And look at this, the Eagles take the lead. 
So it'll be up to Mia Gardner and Anna Salisbury. Off they go. Gardner for Ashland. That was a little bit of the advantage there. Salisbury thought she was going to be in first and had to jump behind Gardner. It might have cost her just a little bit of time. Salisbury's trying to make something of this here. Gardner losing a little bit of steam. When does she want to make her push? Did Salisbury go too early? Or is she just going to absolutely blow by Gardner? Mia running stride for stride with her into the final turn and now to the straightaway. Ashland was a full second faster during regular competition this year. Trying to make this closer, but it's not going to happen. Lubbock Christian wins the opening section. Your heat winner, 344-98. Well done by LCU. Okay, we are moving to section two. This is where things are going to get a little bit more interesting. Finley, Grand Valley State, and Adams State. The Grizzlies have only themselves to think about here. I can't worry about what's going to happen in the next section. Adams State best time this year in the 4x4 is 3.44.57 in late January at the New Mexico Team Open. For what it's worth, Pittsburgh State's best time this year is a full two seconds faster. Going into this final race, Adams State leads Pittsburgh State by five and a half points. You get 10 points if you win, eight for runner-up, and then six, five, four, three, two, one for the remaining third through eighth places. There are some very nervous Gorilla and Grizzly fans around the track here. Referee finally says on your mark, and here we go. Adam State going to try to make something special happen. For what it's worth, last year, Pittsburgh State had a chance in the 4x4 but could not come up with an All-American finish even without Adam State on the track. It's Taylor Ivory, Isabel Abdush, and Victoria Amiadamin. Adam State trusting two freshmen at the outset here in Victoria and Jada Miller, who will run next. Findlay off to a good start. It's Ivory out front, then Victoria and Isabel behind her. Good strong runs. The Findlay Oilers with Taylor Ivory have the lead at the 400 mark. Exchanges, oh boy. Grand Valley State bobbled their exchange a little bit. That certainly cost them. Mary Ellis, Kate Zhang, Jada Miller all on the track. Here come the Grizzlies. Adam State leads Pittsburgh State by five and a half points. 
So there's a big element of they control their own destiny if they can put up a great time. It's the onus on the Gorillas to blow Adam State away. For the first time, Jada Miller has taken the lead for the Grizzlies. Miller into the turn. So Victoria and Jada, two freshmen who have run quite well here at the outset. Ready to hand to the senior, Jessica Simon. Clean exchange, here we go. If you're Adam State, you are frankly far more worried about having clean handoffs than you are even shaving off just the smallest pieces of time. Catherine Guckenberger for Grand Valley and Jordan Taylor for Finley on the track as well. Taylor coming in strong here. This is a particularly impressive group for Adam State because the reality is on this national scene, it's their distance women who have far and away carried the weight. In terms of where they've scored their points, 67 for Adam State, 20 of them came in the mile, 16 points in the 3K, 19 points in the 5K, and they got 10 points for winning the DMR. Only two points for Adam State among all other events and they came in the 800. So to have a team that is nationally qualified for the 4x4 is terrific. We're in the home stretch here as Isilia Upcup from Adams State running with Ashton Gluck and Kylie Ray. Adams State trying to put up the best mark they can because no matter what, they're going to have to sweat this out a little bit. There are still eight schools to run in front of them. How high up the board can the Grizzlies go? Isilia trying with all her might to stay with Kylie Ray. Ray looks like she could win the section. Isilia sprinting. The Finley Oilers are going to win section two. The time to beat. 3431. Adam State is in third place overall behind Lubbock Christian. And the Grizzlies are suddenly sweating bullets. 34526 for Adam State. That is seven tenths of a second slower than the best time they've run this year. An admirable effort. But now they gotta wait it out because the eight fastest times in the country are in front of them. At this point, with Adam State in third, they are guaranteed to have no more than six points. But I think realistically, if you look at what's in front of them, they'll be lucky to score. And so that means if you're a Pittsburgh State fan, this heat is enormously important. Saginaw Valley, Southwest Baptist, Lincoln, and Pittsburgh State all take the track. The Gorillas need to make up five and a half points. If Adam State ends up on the podium, they'll need to make up more. But theoretically, if Adam State doesn't score, if Pittsburgh State overall comes in first, second, or third, they would have enough to win the national title. Either way, they're going to have to wait it out because there's a fourth section coming up after this one. But we have some serious drama brewing here in Kansas. There's an awful lot on the shoulders of Micah Edwards, Olivia Lowry, Kinley Hall, and Yasmin Johnson. And if you are a Grizzly fan, you have never rooted harder for Saginaw Valley, Southwest Baptist, Lincoln, Minnesota State, Azusa Pacific, Northwest Missouri, and the heavy favorites, the Rambells from Angelo State. Enjoy the race. Here we go.
It's a good clean start across for Trinity Greer, Brianna Lord, Shivane Thomas, and Micah Edwards. Edwards for Pittsburgh State, the freshman trying to give the Gorillas something special to work with. You have to approach this race if you're a Gorilla that you need to win this heat because the next section is going to be really, really fast. The best finish in this section belongs to Lincoln at 340.84. All four of the teams in the next section have gone sub 338 and a half. This has to be the best race the Gorillas have run, not just this season, but in a while. They're so far in a good spot. Micah Edwards, what an opening 400. And a big Gorilla lead for Olivia Lowry. Saginaw Valley with Cassie Campbell, Southwest Baptist with Madison Hicks, and Lincoln brings Chenille Clark Giddings on the track. On the ladies' side for the Gorillas, their team score at 61 and a half points has been pretty well spread out. They got 14 points in the pentathlon, 14 points in the triple jump, 11 and a half in the high jump, six in the pole vault. Most of them have come in field events, but they've scored in the 60, the 200, the 800, and in the 60 hurdles. They haven't gotten better than third place in any of those events, but they have gotten something. Can they get something more in the four by four? Handoff number three is clean for the Gorillas. They're running well. Kinley Hall, Shante George, Laura Dixon, and Alana Olszewska all on the track. It's a pretty substantial lead for Pittsburgh State. And I don't think it's getting particularly close at the moment. But Lincoln has the best overall sprinters in the back half of their 4x4. George is closing the gap just a little bit. It's going to be a really important final leg for a couple of freshmen. Lincoln losing some ground here. At first, it looked like the rail splitters were catching up a bit. Now, all of a sudden, Hall is losing some steam, and both have gotten a bit slower. Here we go. Handoff for the Gorillas is good. It's Yasmin Johnson against Odish Odishia Nanton. Both of them freshmen. Kalanique Farrington for Southwest Baptist and Sophia Thielen of Saginaw Valley also on the track. Pittsburgh State, they absolutely have to win this race. Lincoln trying to spoil the party and the rail splitters have been better this season. Over the last 300, we have seen virtually no gain for Lincoln. Can Nanton catch Johnson here late? Pittsburgh State, they were not on the podium last year. This year they put up a best time of 342.60. Holy cow, this is getting tight. Oh no, Johnson is losing steam. Oh no, Nanton for Lincoln goes flying past her. Pittsburgh State cannot hang on. Lincoln into first place, 341-47. Pittsburgh State is currently second overall. And if you're an Adams State fan, you've just taken an enormous deep breath. But it is still not over. Pittsburgh State, the best they can do is score eight points as the runner-up. They have one spot to play with, theoretically, because they could still win if they score six points. Five points would leave them a half point short. How about that closing stretch from Odishia Nanton? Yasmin Johnson went out so fast, and at the end, she just flat out ran out of gas. It was still a great time for Pittsburgh State at 342.79. That is almost the best they've run all year. They were two tenths off of it. It really wasn't Johnson so much losing as Nanton 
at the end of that just turned it on. But Pittsburgh State right now is very nervous. When the Gorilla men got off the 4x4, this place exploded with excitement. And right now, it's a much different environment. The final section in this timed final. Minnesota State, Azusa Pacific, Angelo State, and the defending champion Bearcats from Northwest Missouri State, who last year ran 336-76 to beat the Rambells by a full two seconds. But Angelo State earlier this year put together the fastest time ever, beating Northwest Missouri State's time to win the national title last year, which at the time was the Division II all-time record. It's still, obviously, the championship meet record. Pittsburgh State watching anxiously. Adam State perhaps even more nervous. If you're an Adams State fan, you want this to be a really fast heat. If you like the Gorillas, you're hoping for not only something slow, but something unexpected. Minnesota State with Denisha Cartwright on the track. She is terrific. Mercy Emir for Azusa Pacific. Zakia McDaniel for Angelo State. And Chloe Sains for the Bearcats. We've seen some really good 400s earlier in the day. Azusa Pacific off to a great start here. APU at the front, then Minnesota State right now in third. The Rambells and Bearcats, they are certainly loaded on the back of this team. Angelo State hanging on in third place. Oh, good close here. Nicely done from McDaniel. She goes into second. Minnesota State really losing ground. That's a tough run from Cartwright, who's just been gassed. She's got to be out of, out of energy. She's been so good in the sprints earlier today. Robin Roll Curry, Nicole Warwick, Fatumata Cabo, and Lusaris Toledo all on the track. This young lady is as much fun to watch as anybody I've seen at this meet. And there have certainly been some stars. But Nicole Warwick, who won the national championship yesterday in the high jump. She is a terrific multi-event athlete. She is a great sprinter. I don't know that there's a better all-around performer than the one we've seen from Azusa Pacific out in the Pacific Northwest. She's fallen into second behind Fatumata Cabo. As we get ready for handoff number two, this is the final race at the national championships. Jason Nyamahunj for Angelo State, Kaylee Harp for Northwest Missouri, Alika Lane for Minnesota State, and Kiara Holmes for Azusa Pacific. Angelo State. Again, they broke the all time D2 record one month ago tomorrow with a 336-14, albeit on a banked track. The championship meet record was set last year by Northwest Missouri State when they won the national title, 336-76. Both of those times, by the way, would be good enough to break the facility record here. And here come the Bearcats. It's Kaylee Harp who's pulled well out into first place. So much fun in the 4x4 relay. You see so much movement. The Bearcats gonna try to win this race again in 2023. After they were sixth in 2022 and won it in 23, trying to win it back to back years. They've got the great Tiffany Huey on the track now. Huey won the 400 with a PR 52-58 earlier today. Angelo State with Shade Finley. Elena Werner and Rose Kramer are there too. Wow, Angelo State has faded way to the back. The Rambells are struggling a little bit. 
Northwest Missouri State in firm control with Azusa Pacific coming on. There's obviously drama building overall in addition to this race. The Bearcats look like they're going to cruise to a victory. Minnesota State with Rose Kramer is right on Angelo State's heels. We are eyeing the time closely. Adam State fans, what's going to happen? Northwest Missouri State wins the race. 335-30, Azusa Pacific comes in second, Angelo State is third overall, and that means it's over. Adam State, you are the national champions for the second year in a row. Congratulations to the Bearcats who had a terrific performance. 335-30, are you kidding? It is an all-time D2 record. Never has someone gone faster. What a moment. The Bearcats not only break the championship meet and facility record, they run the fastest Division II 4x400 four meter relay in history. Azusa Pacific, 338.79 comes in second place. A full 3.5 seconds slower than Northwest Missouri State. As Adam State's party is on for the sixth time in program history, but for the first time, back-to-back -back national champions. Chloe Sains, Lusaris Toledo, Kaylee Harp, and Tiffany Huey for Northwest Missouri State put their name in the all-time Division II record book as the fastest 4x400 meter relay team ever, 335-30. And they not only win this race emphatically, but along with Azusa Pacific coming in second and Angelo State, who was the previous record holder, coming in third, the Bearcats played a huge part in that celebration for Adam State. The Grizzlies just missed the podium. They finished ninth overall in this race. Pittsburgh State All-Americans sixth place in the 4x400, but they will not have enough team points. Adam State 67 Pittsburgh State 64 and a half, Minnesota State 54, Grand Valley State 48, West Texas A&M 39. Those are your top five teams on the ladies' side at the Division II championships. On the men's side, Pittsburgh State goes back to back, 69 points, 56 and a half for Grand Valley, 55 for Adams State. 37 for West Texas A&M and Missouri Southern thanks to two national championships in field events yesterday. They gather up 29 total points to round out the top five. What a meet. We certainly expected some drama and knew we would see some terrific efforts, but a couple of Division II records, a couple of meet records, this has been a really, really special weekend. They're about to recognize the Gorillas who not only won the men's uh, team trophy, but they clinched it in style with a season best time of 309.78.
Bailey Stone, DePriest Togans, Wayne Chapman, and Caden Williams, the national champions in the 4x4. Four four. Now, what a fun day. What a fun weekend here in Pittsburgh, Kansas. The Gorillas, I mean, literally jumped Grand Valley State and Adams State for the team title here this evening. Thanks in large part to Trey Betts and Travion Ferguson, who went fifth and sixth in the triple jump. That gave them 13 more points in what was certainly a pretty tight team race for the Gorillas here at home. And obviously, they just slammed the door shut with the 309.78 season best time in the 4 by 400 meter relay. Adam State and Grand Valley State certainly had great meets on the men's side, but ultimately just not quite enough to get past these gorillas who are now back-to-back -back champions in men's track and field. And on the ladies' side, I mean, what more can you say about Gracie Hyde? She was sensational. She ran anchor for the championship DMR team. Gracie won the mile today and then backed it up with a win in the 3,000 meter. And it was so fun to watch her race strategy, kind of letting Kaylee Byer think she was going to set some of the stage. And ultimately, Gracie just picked her spot, blew past her in the last 300. It was really impressive. Uh, and ultimately, Hyde won that race by uh, two seconds. She and Brianna Robles, who came in third place in that 3K, enough to give Adam State 67 total points. And then they had to hold their breath a little bit. <laughs> Pittsburgh State was uh, just sensational in the field events. The Gorillas of their 64 and a half points total, 45 and a half of those came from the pentathlon, triple jump, high jump, and pole vault. Blakely Wynn won the pentathlon. Erica Schammel, the high jump winner, on a Childress and Taylor Nellum's second and third, respectively, in the triple jump. Really impressive for Pittsburgh State, but they just couldn't quite do enough to get past those unbelievable distance runners for Adams State. 
I mean, Gracie Hyde and Brianna Robles combined, just the two of them scored 38 of Adam State's 67 points between their performances in the 3K, the 5K, the DMR, and the mile. And ASU is your national champion for the sixth time in program history, but for the first time, back-to-back -back years. Congrats to those ladies. It's been uh, a ton of fun. A couple of long days. I want to thank everybody on our production crew. It's been uh, terrific. Greg Wiedekamp, Ellen Hughes, and company who have led us all the way all weekend. We've got lots of camera operators who have worked really hard. Long days here when you've got two, uh, two days in a row like this where you're basically inside a venue for 12 or 14 or 16 hours in some cases and uh, certainly appreciate everybody's hard work and hope you enjoyed the coverage at home as much as we enjoyed being here to bring it to you live. I'm Brendan Gulick. So long from Pittsburgh, Kansas, where the Adam State Grizzlies and the Pittsburgh State Gorillas are going home with team trophies. We will have plenty to recap for you over on NCA.com here in just a little bit if you want to see any of the highlights from along the way. Congratulations to Adam State and Pittsburgh State and all of our national champions here in 2024. We'll sign off for now, but we'll continue to, to show you some live video coverage so you can see some of the... Uh, award presentations still to come. So hang with us here in Pittsburgh. Could we have our top four men's teams please report on to the infield? If we can get our top four men's teams, then please start reporting to the infield. And we will get rolling here in just a few moments with the team of podium finishes on the men's and the women's competition. We'll start with the men, and then we'll go to the women. So we need all the top four teams to start assembling. Number one,
At track and field, hey, look around the awards podium and you can direct your attention there as we begin to recognize the top four teams in the men's competition at the 2024 NCAA Indoor Track and Field Championship. Finishing fourth place with a team total of 37 points on the belts of West Texas a and Congratulations there, Coach Stewart and staff. The Bucks take the podium on the men's side there. They score eight in the DMR, eight in the 65 in the 800, three in the 3K, five in the 3K, the three, three in the 5,000, two in the 60 meter hurdles, four in the high jump, four in the long jump. A well rounded effort there for the Mother Scott King of Texas.
and we've all got them squared up. Coach Miller's going to pick up a plant. I don't know what's going on here, but congratulations to the Grizzlies, the Gorillas of Pittsburgh State.
And next we'll go finishing in third with a team total of 54 points. Taking it all the way down to the relay, folks. This is the Mavericks of Minnesota State University, Mankata. Minnesota State puts 54 on the board. They score five in the four by four, eight in the 65 in the 200, two in the mile, 24 in the hurdles, three in the pole vault, and five in the triple jump, and two in the pentathlon. Congratulations, coach, turgeon, staff, and athletes out of Mankato, Minnesota, the Mavericks. Finishing as the 2024 NCAA Division II Women's Indoor Track and Field National Runner-Up Team with 64 and a half points in the scoring time. The Gorillas of Pittsburgh State. Congratulations staff back to the podium here on the women's side of the competition. They did it in style and form with three in the 4x4, two in the 60, six in the 200, four in the 800, four in the 60 hurdles, 11 and a half in the high jump, six in the bubble, 14 in the triple, and 14 in the pentathlon. Pittsburgh State scores in nine of 17 events on the women's side of the competition. A very balanced squad here out of Pittsburgh, Kansas. And track and field, you guessed it. That concludes our final day of competition at the NCAA Division II NCAA Indoor Track and Field Championship.